Ready. Play. Esa es la gran diferencia.
<laughs> really? Yeah. No, you don't know the ropes. He will. He's just a kid. He's literally a kid. That's kind of weird. But his answer is just, he's just very simple and very, because uh, I also got to talk to Sinner, and Sinner is very nice, like, I can tell, he's a little bit more mature. He's also 23. Exactly. A little bit older. Exactly. Like, his answers are really detailed. He's just like, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. I had a fun time on the tour. I had a great time on the tour. Okay. <laughs> Any, anything else? Nuance? No? No, it's fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello there. Hello. Welcome to Talking Tennis, everyone. And this is it. This is the Indian Wells men's final between Daniel Medvedev and Carlos Alcaraz. And I'm very, very happy to have Kira alongside me for mm. what will be the second prestigious event she has covered today. <laughs> I don't know about that. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be here. I, I, I am, of course, referring to was at the table tennis event you were doing earlier. <laughs> yes, that was yesterday. Um, but my weekend has been quite busy. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, wow. We're very pleased that you've uh, you've come to join us for um, ahead of this match, and the players are actually ready to go out on court. So, I guess let's talk a little about it and. Um, I'm guessing due to your busy weekend that you did not manage to catch uh, the semi-finals. Uh, I haven't, unfortunately. They were in the middle of the night and I haven't had any time today, which is a real shame. It won't stop me watching them. Obviously, we've got like a two-day gap before Miami now, so it won't stop me watching them. Then I will fit them in. But, <laughs> but um, no, I didn't. I've watched the highlights. Very impressed with both, I think. Who knows what would have happened if Tommy Paul didn't roll his ankle? I still think there could have been something there in the room, but I don't know. I, I was going to ask, like, is Daniel Medvedev very lucky to be here today? I don't know about very lucky. You never know with him. He could have pulled something out of the bag anyway, but I definitely think Tommy Paul looked like he had a bit of the measure of him for a while, by the sounds of it. And I think <laughs> Daniel Medvedev agreed. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate his honesty. Uh, it's one yes. of the reasons why I like him. Absolutely. Same here. Uh, I didn't see that match, it has to be said, because um, I, so I did cover the first semi semi-final, um, But I think if you watch that stream back, you will see that I pretty much almost fell asleep on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> um, not because it was a boring match, but because uh, this nearly 30-year-old body is not used to staying up that late sober. <laughs> It's uh, really late. <laughs> uh, so um, it was a uh, uh, yeah. So I think it was a three-hour delay. Restarted at midnight. Um, John saying, uh, well, the producer saying that um, he fell asleep. Um, but uh, given the age of our producer, no offense, that's no surprise to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fell asleep too. I don't think it's an age thing. I. I was straight. I was straight asleep. You're you're a university student, Kira. You you should be putting the boundaries of what is possible for humans to do. It's just not my style. It's just not my style. Oh, you're one of those responsible students. Yeah, uh, well, that might be a bit far. That oh. might be a bit far, but uh, but certainly not one that can uh, that can stay awake very long at night, particularly after all that filming, which I see is on the screen. Yep. Which is uh, yeah, that was fun. Yes, there you go. So uh, that was your the coverage yesterday, and so um, we we moved to today. So I guess we as the they're getting ready to um, warm up. Um, Ghost reminding us that Tommy Paul had a ton of winners and fewer unforced errors than Medvedev. 
and um, so maybe Ghosty believes that Medvedev is lucky to be here today. Um, how do you see this final working out? Oh, I knew I was going to have to predict it, but I've been dreading it anyway. You don't um, have to. You could you could dodge the question. Just no, just, that would be very poor of me. No, expert it's worth this. If somebody if somebody else dodged it, I'd be frustrated with them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Um, <laughs> I either think Kalitos does it really easily, or it becomes a real battle, and then I think Medvedev takes it. I'm gonna go mm. with I'm gonna go with Alcaraz. Mm. Which maybe is is obvious, but I think I'm going to go with Alcaraz. Okay. In... Do you think it will be as one sided or less one sided than the final was last year? Less one sided. There we go. There's a, there's some confident predictions here. Less one sided. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go for it. I think less one sided, but if it becomes a real sort of slog in the third set, then I think Medvedev might manage it. But other than that, I'm, I'm going to go. Alcaraz in two sets, but but less comfortably than last time. How about you? Uh, I probably should have thought about this before I asked the question. So the <laughs> um, uh, so I fall into my own trap. Oh no! <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I've, I cl clearly never done this before. The mm. um, uh, I would say, given how Alcaraz was against Sinner, how confident he's been through this tournament. The conditions favour him. I am going to go with Alcaraz. Have Alcaraz and Medvedev played since that US Open semi-final? They did play yeah. in the ATP finals. How did that one go? I can't remember. 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four to Alcaraz. Alcaraz. Yeah, I think then I'm going to, yeah, similar to you, two set, two sets, um, mm -hmm. similar scoreline to the ATP finals, yeah. maybe one more yeah. per set. But um, I think you also leave some wiggle room for some tie breaks maybe. Yes, I am going to. I am going to to leave some time. I think there'll be one time break. Yeah, I'm going a bit too far with this prediction. This is very specific. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to be so wrong. I'm going to be more specific. The more dangerous it is. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the producer asked if I was going to Wimbledon this year. By the way, um, I haven't got tickets in any ballot or anything. Uh, I'm hoping to wait for the returns to come out. I, I live a bit too far from London, really, to to do the queue and, and have a go at that. I'm not sure I could, I could do it. I'd be very tempted. Um, I, I mean, if you have the budget for it, it's what I did last year. I booked a hotel room for two nights and queued, queued well, I would say both times, but in reality, the second one, I bailed on the queue because it was raining. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and decided to go to the pub with everyone else from Talking Tennessee was there. Oh, see, that's so, lovely. Um, which was a a good a good a good day for us. We watched Andy mm. Murray in a pub, um, and um, two of and um, Claire and Hanya, who you haven't met yet, were very excited to realise that uh, Morgan Taylor Fritz's girlfriend was in the same pub. So oh, they really? under her down. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Um, players are warming up by the way we're not just talking over the match um, no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah so this year I do have tickets um, uh, uh, my mum and I were both successful in the LTA ballot and yes. then I got an email from Wimbledon on Friday to tell me that oh you weren't successful in the ballot but you can like be one of the first people to buy tickets online so I went in and I kid you not pretty much everything was sold out except centre court Really? Apart from, like, on all the days, like, court one, two, and three were sold out on all three, on all the days they were available. And centre court was only sold out on day one, the men's semi finals and the men's final. Wow. That's incredible. Is that to do with your tweet about people preferring? That's where I the... kind of went because I yeah. basically went, oh my gosh, do I buy tickets for the women's final or do I go on the Thursday because I'm in London anyway? And I went with the cheaper option and also <laughs> that kind of, oh, but I also might um, see um, a big player on centre. Like there's still that part of me that's that's wanting, uh, uh, that, that would be like, oh, I, I could see Andy or Eager. Mm. Um, and it could end up being neither of them, but I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Uh, so, but hopefully, yeah, you'll get, so maybe I'm saying that maybe you'll get a similar email at some point. Fingers um, crossed. Yes. Depending yeah. what's left, it depends on your your budget if you want to try for centre. 
yeah I, I went for it last year and um it was it was pushing the budget quite a bit so <laughs> we'll see whether I can I can do so again um yeah so but there, that's the pie but if not yeah um honestly um even if you've got a friend in London crash with them and tube it that's what mm. I would think if you're willing to wake up even if you're in London though if you're going to queue you need to get up as early as possible yeah um you you need to be in the first 500 in the queue to have a chance of centre tickets because mm. uh, they only have, like, have 500 centre tickets available for queuers um, and simply 500 caught one tickets so I think you need to get that like 4 5 a.m to yeah. have a chance um, unless you camp overnight uh, <laughs> yeah. which I don't know if we're that hardcore no I don't think I am quite yet maybe at some point I don't think I am quite yet uh, you see, you you unfortunately you get uh, less resilient as you get older. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... I'm already pretty <laughs> lacking in resilience. That's not that doesn't bode well. <laughs> I, do, I don't know why I'm treating you as that much younger than me. There's only like ten years difference. But... It's all right. It's all right. And I'm I'm quite old for a for a, a first year uni student as well. I am I'm I'm not your eighteen year old. Oh, I student. I did the same thing. Uh, older older first year student which was fun when I was put in with uh, 18 year olds exactly um fun fact I lived in um a in halls like actually this year will be 10 years since I went to uni oh, wow. uh fresher and uh yeah I lived in an eight person flat corridor um with six girls and one other guy oh wow yeah they really don't care who they throw you in with do they they just they oh, just really they were, it. they were all love they were all uh <laughs> All lovely, still friends with them, um, but I it was a, it was a learning curve. I will say that. <laughs> right, are they starting on your screen, or am I going to be ridiculously ahead again? No, I I've just seen Medford Devs try first serve, but he's missed Brilliant. it. Brilliant. So. We sound like we might be at the same place. Yeah, I figured out what the delay might be. Backhand from Medford Dev, slice Alcaraz. Medford Dev inside out forehand. Backhand Alcaraz, backhand Medvedev. Here we go. This might be some long rallies here. Forehand Medvedev, cross court. Forehand Alcaraz. They go trading cross court. Forehand. Oh, that's an incredible angle for Medvedev. Great start to this match. I'm going to sound like every other commentator ever and say, if it carries on like this, we're in for a cracker. That's what they all say. Here we go. But we are. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Um, so we've got a second uh, point now. Huge serve up the tee for Medvedev. Then finish off with a plus one backhand. I think Medvedev is probably the only player I can think of with a serve plus one backhand that's super <laughs> effective. Yeah, absolutely. I can't think of anyone else who, who would like. Yeah, you would go serve plus one forehand. No, Medvedev serve plus yeah. one backhand. And it's such a, it's so him to be so different like that as well. He probably loves that. Medvedev doesn't do things uh, normally, let's be honest. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I, I, said to, I said to Damien on the stream yesterday that if I was going to show like someone, if I was coaching someone and was like like a kid and I was like, mm. watch videos of Yannick Sinner and copy him, I would not ask them to copy Medvedev. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Nobody no, would. He's, he's, he's very successful, but we don't know how. But nobody knows why, no. I don't think he knows why. Lovely I mean, ace. he's just hit an ace to close this game out. But, I mean, I don't know. I, he's obviously part of the right generation because he's one of a few out there that we would call big serving counterpunchers, or at least I've heard commentators call big serving counterpunchers. So yeah. Zverev is in that category. Um, Hatchinov, maybe in that category as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, or, or is he just super consistent? But... Um, I think he's in that generation where that kind of style would work. Maybe. Oh, lost you for a second there, sorry. No, I just trailed off. No, uh, no, I promise you, you know, I did lose you. It wasn't that you trailed off. <laughs> okay. No, I, okay. By the way, it's great to see so many people joining us on Twitch. Um, please give us a like on Twitch. Um, give us a, um, you know, follow, subscribe to us on Twitch if you want. The counter you'll see below is our YouTube subscribers. We are five away from reaching 6.6 thousand uh we've we grown massively this tournament so yeah let's, let's see if we can hit that we've got plenty of people on youtube as well so yeah if you are new please hit subscribe and watch that tick over um at the very least and um, it'll help make our day absolutely 
this is what I need to keep me going. Make sure I don't fall asleep. I'm not going to fall asleep, I promise. Uh, not, not unless there's some rain delays. <laughs> not unless there's a rain delay and then I make no promises. <laughs> All right. Well, we're into our first Alcaraz service game. Um, let's see how he works this one out. Um, by the way, I'm curious. Uh, did you see uh, Goatee's question about what house you were in at university? Oh, no, I missed that. Oh, Sorry, no, he, uh, he's way, way up. But um, he uh, way back. But yeah, <laughs> I'm guessing Ravenclaw, you look smart. I don't know how you can look smart, but funnily enough, I am a Ravenclaw. So <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'll stay up late and I'm it, tired. It, <laughs> very, you very clearly give off Ravenclaw vibes. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I'll take it. I mean, look, the worst vibes you could give off is Slytherin. <laughs> well, we don't say that. I think Ghosties meshes up. Ghosties is Slytherin, I know. I'm doing that to wind <laughs> <him>. <laughs> Um, I actually don't know what house I am. So No? No, I haven't taken that test. I could see Ravenclaw for you as well, to be honest. Possibly. Yeah, I think that probably fits. I'm not particularly. Uh, I'm not particularly uh, gung ho, and mm. I'm not, uh, uh, and I'm not weird enough to be Hufflepuff. No, you have to be. Yeah. Although, Sorry, to say Hufflepuffs in the chat. <laughs> I, would, I would say I'm a big. I would say most of my friends are Hufflepuffs. Mm. If yeah. you were wondering what on earth we're talking about, go read Harry Potter. <laughs> Alcaraz um, is still serving, in case you're wondering. Yes, bring us back to the tennis. Good job, Kira. Keep... <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning. the one keeping the stream on track, but um, <laughs> clearly I'm somewhat, still somewhat Dulali from lack of sleep. Uh, second serve from Alcaraz. Bet Kandrian played for Medvedev. Inside up, forehand from Alcaraz into the net, and not a great start from Alcaraz. No. I often see this from him really early on, though, just that sort of. It was the same in Sinner, wasn't it? That first set, even, was. I believe, not his best. Uh, I think he does take a little while to get going most of the time. That is true. Do you think how much of, I mean, obviously, I, just, I was going to ask you about the match yesterday, but of course I really didn't see it. So mm. um, backhand slice from Medford under pressure from Alcaraz. Alcaraz goes for the drop shot. Medford's coming in, scoops it over the net. Alcaraz is going for the forehand pass. He gets it done and it's 40-30. Cross court had that space there and Medvedev couldn't cut it off and there's a very very excited small child in the, oh, uh, she's over the moon isn't she actually small child implies that she's a toddler which um uh she definitely was she probably looks like five or six yeah um ghosty I think the Pavi G of the Eagle fandom's already been taken um I'm not gonna name names <laughs> oh dear wow that's um, um <laughs> what the title you want to go for oh dear Al yeah Alcaraz tried yeah that's an oh dear to Alcaraz's serving volley um not going well no sort of just cut across it far too much and it spins out wide for juice who are those kids and why do they keep cutting to them I know are they certain people are they somebody importance kids <laughs> I, I didn't maybe. know the woman next to them I'm afraid uh, we've got a great serve from Alcaraz, followed by a forehand up the line, which he um, misses, looks a little annoyed with himself, and break point Medvedev. Um, fun fact, Kira, if Medvedev does win this title, mm -hmm. he will have officially won every hardcore Masters 1000. Yes, he will have. And he'll be the youngest to do it, am I right? Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah, because he would have to be. And how old is Medvedev now? 20, 28. 27, 28. Yeah, one um, of those. Uh, Djokovic did it in 2018. He was in his 30s by that point when he won Cincinnati. When did Roger complete the set? Because he got Indian Wells in 04, Miami in 05, Canada in, I want to say, okay, the mid 2000s. Cincinnati was pretty early on. Yeah, this is where my the limits of my knowledge are a bit I got going. It's okay. I think I saw something that this is certainly not my own knowledge that it's coming from, but I'm sure oh. I saw something earlier that said that Roger was in his 30s when he did it. Yeah, because Shanghai came in in 2009 and Roger would have been 28 at that point and he definitely didn't win the first iteration of that one. So yeah, Daniel Medvedev would be the youngest. Still break point out, He saved the first one, but he's conceded um, that juice point. 
Nice to have you here, Jake and Ashley. Just in time, maybe, to see what happens here. First serve into the net from Carlos Alcaraz. Second serve on a pressure point already in Medvedev's. Getting a good start here. Serves. Middle of the box. Forehand in play for Medvedev. And the backhand is massively miscued from Alcaraz. He did Ooh. not run around the shot at all. Trying no, to get too close to him. There. Yeah. I wasn't Early a break. Yeah. It wasn't a particularly deep return. Um, yeah. Ghost saying Alcaraz looking sluggish. Um, he did, definitely didn't move his feet for that point. No. Not at all. But I would I would imagine he'd have recovered okay from that match with Sinner. You'd have thought so. It's it wasn't too sort of long and, and tiresome on the court, even though the rain delays and everything made it difficult. I don't think that would be an issue today. And obviously Medi played afterwards anyway, so yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe he's got a little bit more time to recover. He's just put that forehand into the net for Love 15. He knows he needs to concede this break. A little bit of pressure on this one. Yeah, um, you could see him breaking right back here, to be honest. Yeah, I think that the conceding a break um, is tough. Are you much of a tennis player, Kira? I'm not at all, no. Um, we were talking about this on the stream the other day and everyone was talking about playing tennis. <laughs> so, no, definitely not. I, I did used to play table tennis. That's why I've got a little bit of a in with them and that's why I do some filming with them and stuff. So um, I could play, maybe beat a few people at table tennis, but uh, don't let me play tennis, no. Double yeah, fault for Medford ever loved 30. Um, I am a tennis player, although I haven't played since it got dark and cold at night um, and uh, or too early in the evening. Um, mm. We don't have any courts with floodlights where I live, um, apart from the local university campus. Um, no, and uh, yeah, so yeah, you couldn't see it, um, not unless you 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 kind of put uh, high vis paint on the tennis ball. Um, <laughs> backhand from Alcaraz into the net, fifteen thirty um, Medvedev in this service game. Um, but yeah, I am a, yeah I do play so ever so often, and I do not enjoy serving. Um, <laughs> serving is so um i find it, it's not a shot i hate the being the one full control of it i hate having the pressure to kind of get the job the done with pressure. it um and i miss my first serve 70 percent of the time anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's not there's, there's some people you have that's the same as some people in the atp i'm not naming names but <laughs> similar. maybe on the challenge <laughs> Uh, break back points for Alcaraz. Yeah. Could have possibly expected this, that he was going to have a little bit of fight after going such an early breakdown. Uh, great serve for Medvedev, though. Alcaraz can't get that return over the net. It's 30-40. Um, so we have a... Um, so we've got another break point to save. We'll uh, we'll have a, a keep an eye on um, this point here before we keep, carry on chatting. Hello, Davey, by the way. Serve from Medvedev into the net. He was trying to go up the tee. Alcaraz is starting to move again, which is good to see. Really deep return position from the Spaniard. That's also, that's almost like the um, Djokovic-like. Oh, and he's really hooked that forehand into the tram line. That was not a great return. No, it really wasn't. And he's missing quite a lot at the moment. I, I feel like there'd be unforced errors at the moment. Um, but again, it sort of feels like that warming up period that he seems to have in matches, I wouldn't necessarily be too worried. But Medvedev's got a serve that can get him out of trouble as well when he needs it. So That is true. Slice from Alcaraz ends up in the net. He was trying to change. I don't know if he was trying to change the pace or whether he was trying to bail out of that a little bit, but that was a very sort of low effort slice. Yeah, it didn't look like he was trying to go for a really good drop shot either so i'm not really sure i'm not really sure what he was trying to go for there um alcaraz has made five backhand errors already in this match and unsurprisingly daniel medvedev has made none according mm -hmm. to the stats just flash up on screen forehand cross court from medvedev the forehand of alcaraz forehand medvedev alcaraz keeps going cross court medvedev's gonna have to go on the run for that forehand he puts it in the net and it's juice that was a nice angle from from alcaraz but again that was a point that he could play almost solely on his forehand and it's the backhand where he's leaking the errors so 
I am. By the way, Davy, I, I I appreciate the joke you just made. That is brilliant. Um, pretty niche. Probably only Brits will get it, but um, uh, <laughs> that is good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Ghosty thinks it's the start of a joke when in fact it is the punchline. But anyway, <laughs> um, surely the whole, the whole joke. That can in, up the middle from Medvedev. Slice from Alcaraz has run out from all uh, using his speed to his advantage. Still slicing to the Medvedev backhand. So Alcaraz is still slicing, but goes up the line. Is it windy? Do you think? Because everything Alcaraz that goes wrong, kind of going up the the line away from the, to the opposite side of the umpire's chair, is curving into the tram it's line. Curving right round, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it, he's either putting he's because like the first one was a forehand and the second one was a a backhand and i i don't know maybe it was the trajectory maybe put a bit too much side spin on that one but um yeah so, so medvedev is serving uh but it looks like he's got a luck call on that one um yeah i'm wondering if there's a wind factor and that's what's yeah pushing some of them out backhand from alcaraz backhand medvedev backhand alcaraz up the line forehand medvedev going up the line to the backhand of alcaraz which seems to be letting down forehand medvedev cross court now they're changing the forehands cross court at the minute some long rallies going on here medvedev and uh, loading with that forehand is calling alcaraz to scramble that one but still going on here alcaraz now changing the direction of the backhand and medvedev goes long with that backhand long rally ending with medvedev missing on the backhand that's unusual but alcaraz uh, got that back absolutely you wouldn't have expected him to miss that backhand either. I, I think that was partly due to the length of the rally rather than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it is unusual. Like when you go toe to toe with Daniel Medvedev, you have to be pretty solid because he's not going to break down that much. No, it's like a wall. Indeed. Here we go, Medvedev is serving, went for the body serve, but went long. So what's Medvedev got here? He's going to be serving mid box back in front of play from Alcaraz, and Medvedev having to run too far back, mm -hmm. and uh, the trajectory was just the ball just keeping going to, um, towards him, and he puts the backhand into the net, uh, and we have a third breakpoint chance for Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, it was a good it was a good return, I thought, there, because he could see exactly where Medvedev wasn't going to be able to run around to. Unreturnable serve to save the break point. Yeah. From Medvedev. This one, th this game could end up being very critical in this set. Absolutely. It's one of those games, I think. I think so. If Medvedev holds here, you feel like he'll take a lot of that confidence into his future service games. If he doesn't, he might struggle on those crunch points that he's usually quite good at bringing out a mega serve on. Okay, Med Medvedev, Alcaraz um, mid-court with the return. Backhand Alcaraz cross-court. Backhand Medvedev, the Alcaraz slice. Forehand Medvedev changing direction. Forehand cross-court from Alcaraz. Still landing in. Alcaraz goes for the well, he was going for the drop shot, but actually that was more of a slice. Maybe I was uh, an interesting shot. They're now trading again. Forehand cross court from Medvedev. Alcaraz slides into that forehand. Backhand Medvedev to the Alcaraz forehand. And again, Medvedev going cross court. They're not missing right now. Slice from Alcaraz. Medvedev is going to come in behind the backhand. He's going to come into the net. Alcaraz puts his backhand into the net trying to pass. And I feel like he, went, he didn't need to go for that, Alcaraz. I think he went for too much on it almost, and that's why he put it into the net. Uh, Tom Holland and Zendaya are in the audience. They were in the audience for the women's final earlier as well, causing much of a stir, especially in the eager fandom when she was then pictured chatting to Zendaya afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, gosh. Please don't quote me, Jerome. That, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. No, I'll stand by that one, actually. That's not too bad. I worry about being quoted in general. But actually, yeah, no, I think that's true. It's I not like... It's not like we're going to quote you on Medvedev's going to win in two tie breaks. No, <laughs> Alcaraz is going to win in two tie breaks, even. Oh, no. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Oh, Actually, well, I don't think here. you said anyway. So, no, no. One tie break, I said. But he's held here, so he might not need a tie break. That's a really strong hold from Medvedev. And like you said, I think a really important one in this first set, momentum-wise. I was wondering why you were making a June reference, Davey. Um and now I've worked out why, because of course Zendaya is in it. Fun fact, I haven't seen it yet. I am actually seeing it for the first time on Saturday. 
you can tell us that I've, I've not seen it either but i've not seen part one so on yes um i'm going around to a friend's house we're going to watch part one and then we're going to go to the cinema and watch part two nice nice um yes it's not um as someone who's a bit of a sci-fi nerd mm. surprised i haven't watched it yet but yeah, I'm quite. I I'm usually quite into my sci-fi as well, but I feel like I've um, I've been slacking the last few years. I know what you mean. I mean, like I have I haven't bothered keeping up with Marvel since Endgame. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I mean as well. That's kind of completely fallen by the wayside nowadays. Uh, tennis has taken over instead completely. Oh. Entirely. I mean, it always ha it was always up there, but um, just so else? much of it. <laughs> Because you come from a, um, you, you've been indoctrinated into tennis by your family, haven't you? Yes, although I, I like to say they sort of um, sowed the seed and then I've sort of um, forced them to to really get into it. So I think uh, Ghosty asked earlier how I got into it when I don't play tennis. Um, Wimbledon was always on in our house. My parents have loved that for years and years, um, but never really watched anything else. And then in lockdown, I got really into uh, the 2021 French Open, like like really into it. Um, and never looked back and watched practically every tournament since. Um, and my parents, who used to only watch Wimbledon, are now practically forced into following every tennis tournament in the world. So uh, I'm quite proud of myself on that one, I think. This, this is pretty much what happened to me and my family as well. Very much. Wimbledon always on. And then one day when I was flipping channels, I discovered Eurosport because we had Sky yeah. at the time. And, uh, oh, there's a tennis event happening on a orange court. This is interesting. <laughs> wow. Um, and that's how I ended up watching Roland Garros 2007. Yeah. Uh, and went, okay, this is cool. And then 2008, oh, we've got the Australian Open as well. This is quite fun. And um yeah from there on i was watching the australian french and wimbledon couldn't watch the us didn't have the right um mm. subscriptions for it um and uh yeah that is gradually i don't think i actually started watching other tour events outside of slams until um lockdown actually because really? um i didn't i i didn't have the subscriptions for it yeah <laughs> that's always in the way nowadays isn't it it's such a um fun. and like lockdown gave me a good opportunity yeah definitely right got 30 <laughs> on the Alcaraz serve in this game um he's gone along with that first serve uh Alcaraz um hoping to get a game on the board here goes second serve mid box backhand in play for Medvedev forehand Alcaraz backhand Medvedev mid court forehand Alcaraz kind of loop there's a lot of loop on the Alcaraz forehand at the minute backhand from Medvedev backhand Alcaraz cross court Medvedev change direction with his backhand forehand Alcaraz cross court they're now trading forehands cross court um Medvedev really going for that angle there Alcaraz having to really stretch for that one and goes long into 30 15. do you think that would be sort of his part of his tactics before the match in his head to get that sort of loopy forehand in so that Medvedev struggles more on the counter punch? Or do you think it's more of something that he's he's not necessarily trying to do at the moment? That's a good question. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know why a loopy forehand would make Medvedev's counter punch harder, harder mm. for Medvedev's counter punch. Yeah. Um, maybe generate like... Um, maybe stop him from flattening it out but um that's a good question no i i i think it's just how he's playing today yeah i i agree that's that's why i asked i i feel like that can't necessarily that can't be the tactic it, i don't think i think this is where i know I, we want someone like vanchon um yes. who obviously follows carlos's career closely for the eager and carlos show um but also um as a former junior player has a little bit of insight yeah I've never I've not met Vanch yet um and all I've heard about Vanch I believe is that people keep telling me that he talks about being good on both wings um, yes but, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows a lot lot more than that so I think I've probably been given a bad representation of him do you, do you follow him on Twitter yes yeah of course yeah um he yeah he's pretty much how you would expect him to sound from his Twitter <laughs> Yeah, no, his Twitter's um, great. I get some great stats from his Twitter. It's fabulous. Oh, for sure. Oh, huge forehand from Alcaraz, and he's fist pumping there. Winner, love fifteen on the Medvedev serve. Maybe Alcaraz can carve himself another break opportunity here. 
yeah, he needs to sort of get himself fired up. I think that's when he plays his best. Um, that sort of aggressiveness that we haven't seen, I would say, so far in the match. First serve missed by Medford trying to cut the T. Uh, Davy, South African commentator on Sky is Robbie Koenig, who actually has appeared on Talking Tennis once, a long, long time ago. Um, yes, not as a commentator. John interviewed him about Rafael Nadal versus Taylor Fritz um, 2022 Wimbledon because he was doing a Matches of the Year retrospective uh, series. Nice. Um, That's really cool. Here we go. 15 all for Medevil. He's gone long. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I, that was a good that was a good chat. If you want to dig through our live stream archives, um, backhand from the Alcaraz to the backhand of Medvedev, the Alcaraz slice from Alcaraz, forehand cross court Medvedev, forehand uh, cross court Alcaraz, and Medvedev scrambled that one. That was too good. It was practically by Medvedev's feet. And it's fifteen thirty. Alcaraz Great really length. this one. Great length on that one. I am just a little bit behind you, so I'm I'm left, let off the hook on the um, point by point today. <laughs> yes, he's not no. going to ask me to do this. <laughs> no, um, to be fair, I know uh, it's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea to try. I just like to try and bring it to life for people who aren't watching because that's why I'd watch one of these streams. That Alcaraz, oh. yeah, Alcaraz forehand. Yeah, drop shot. Al Medvedev comes in and yeah, the backhand. Medford of cannot pick up. I don't know why it says 30 or that should be 1540, right? I think so. Or is it 1530 and the scoreboard's ahead of us? No, oh, it's supposed to be 30 all. Alcaraz frustrated that return's gone long and it's 40 30. I was sure that um clearly we got the score wrong. But I'm sure <laughs> it was weird for both of us to do it. <laughs> that is really weird. Um here we go. Uh, Medvedev is going to be serving out wide and misses it. So we have a second serve here. Alcaraz kind of adjusting himself and then double fault for Medvedev. 40, we're back to juice. Never I'm very used to Medvedev using his serve to get out of a sticky situation. The only person I can think of who's not, you know, who's not just like a server who uses their serve more effectively to get out of a bad situation is Yannick Sinner because I think he does that exceptionally but Medvedev does as well forehand cross court from Alcaraz the forehand of Medvedev who gets in the net and it's a, now it's a break point chance for Alcaraz <laughs> this time it is I really this time it is I, I really thought you had before never mind um, I mean, I was about, I was saying, I usually like to do point by point so I can bring the, the match to life if, if it was for me uh, not watching, uh, if I couldn't watch the match. But uh, I have to say, I've done a terrible job by getting very confused about whether it's break point or not, but it definitely is now. <laughs> no, no. It's all right. Everyone can see the score on the screen. They they, they know better than us anyway. Uh, <laughs> backhand from Alcaraz, backhand Medvedev, cross court. Alcaraz is going to hit the inside out forehand like he does. Medvedev still runs it down. Drop shot Alcaraz. Medvedev has to run around to pick it up, which he does. Just about drops in Alcaraz, hits the pass, gets the job done. He raises his fist and yeah, he's back in the great. set. That was great. That was more like the Alcaraz that we sort of want to see in this match to make it competitive. That was. Is that the Alcaraz who has the edge over Medvedev as a general rule? If he plays like that, yeah. If he stops missing backhands, yeah, I would say I would say he does have an edge at his best. Over Medvedev. But Kira Hancock's 2024, never count Medvedev out. I will stick by it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, Ghost is asking how it was you got in, how you decided that you actually liked tennis. Oh, yeah. What um, it was about it. I mean, you have to scroll up because there's a lot of I'm leg wondering. chat. Yes, I saw. <laughs> no. Can you talk a little bit about falling in love with tennis? It was Novak's. Th okay, not Novak's thighs. Um, in this case, anyway, I'm sure for many people, I can I can understand, but not for me. Um, I think for me, I've always before then I've I've been a football fan for a long time, and uh, Olympics fan and Wimbledon fan, like I said. So I love sort of live sport a lot, anyway. But 
I think with tennis, it's that um, it's one person against one other person and they're just sort of fighting it out. And I know we can have the discussion about coaches and how much they influence everything, but I think that really, really appealed to me, especially because I used to play table tennis at a reasonable level. I've always loved individual sport, but never really watched it. And I think that's what really drew me to tennis. I really love the sort of mental side of that. You've got you at one end and your opponent at the other, and you've got to beat them. And I think that I think that's fascinating. I always have. <laughs> I think that is one of the things that uh, attracts us, especially when it's a it's a match and two people are playing at the best of their ability. Because uh, the thing with team sports is, if someone's not performing, they can be covered by the rest of the team. Mm. Um, but here it's kind of all out there and it's a lot easier to kind of analyze um, yeah. so yeah that's uh i think that is is a very much an appeal uh for a lot of people thanks davy i appreciate that uh do i like boxing no not at all uh <laughs> that's not for me um but that's more to do with the punching each other doesn't interest I, me i i i'm not a fan of contact sports no it doesn't it just doesn't really do anything for me but I prefer, um, I think, I probably don't know much about boxing, so I'm sure there's a big mental side to boxing. Um, but, like, from my outsider's perspective, I don't see that sort of real, like, we talked about Medvedev being so smart earlier, or somebody mentioned it, I think, and that really comes across, and I think I find that bit really fascinating. I'm sure that's a factor in boxing, but I don't really see it. Yeah, I mean, I don't really watch it either. I have uh, I did do a little bit of research on it. I asked some people who were tennis and boxing fans uh, because I was writing a piece on what makes the GOAT. And obviously, Muhammad Ali is kind of disputed, talked about being the undisputed GOAT of boxing, even though he arguably doesn't have many records left. Um, yeah. So what is it that's kind of keeping up there? And so I wanted to see if I could apply that to tennis. Um, but in terms of, um, yeah, a ghost, I asked you about other mano e mano sports as he's um talking uh, as he's saying um i would say anything racket sports yeah and martial arts sports basically oh that's quite cool um I'd like karate judo taekwondo mm. you can watch those at the olympics um actually i don't mind those so much because they tend to be much more controlled fighting um, you're not yes. actually trying to hurt the other person to the yeah other just the whole like, knocking people out thing really yeah. <laughs> i don't really see i don't see any appeal in it myself but i could understand what other people see in it like ghost said it's very cognitive i can see that when i think about it i can see why it would be very you have to come up with tactics and stuff but it's just it's not ever appealed to me uh fencing in there as well um fencing, i love that at the olympics to be fair i do watch the fencing at the olympics yeah, but I guess then, you know, you've got the 1v1 and then again, yes, there are other Olympic sports that's kind of, you're playing for yourself, but in a field of people like most athletics events. Yeah, Alcaraz stronghold there to 15, just quickly, um, to get it back to three all. Um, I'm an F1 fan, which, uh, mm. yeah, it's that weird blend of, yeah. you know, you, it's a team of people, but um, on the track, it's it's you versus the world but again kind of one versus the field rather one v one yeah is it the driver or is it the car i, I love it one yeah it's, usually, <laughs> it's all it's, it's the car yeah it's not even a question it's the car but some people debate it um insert max verstappen memes um 15 love med for dev um forcing an error from alcaraz there um trying to keep this set competitive yeah, it looked like Alcaraz went for the lob there, but uh, quite difficult to lob. People like Medvedev and Zverev. So he yeah. just sort of smashed it. I think the only player could probably pull off a lob like that is Andy Murray. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> lob, <like Scott. laughs> lob winner for, to get the Olympics. Kira Hancock's in her Scott Barkley era. <laughs> <laughs> for the next three months until Andy Murray retires. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think I think there'll be a lot of people in their Scott Barkley era over the next three months. And I think rightly so, to a point. Um, Alcaraz gets that return in play from Medvedev. Um, he's taking that really deep return stance. Great forehand from Medvedev to put Alcaraz off balance. And Alcaraz goes long, 40 love. That was a lovely forehand down the line from Medvedev. Yeah, that was a really, really uh, great point. 
33 minutes on the clock already. Good grief. Um, yeah, this has been a bit of a battle, this set. We're not, I think this one's going to be a, a really uh, tight contest. I think you can always judge the quality of a set by the time on the clock rather than the score. Yeah. Um, as Medvedev uh, double faults, 40-15. Uh, yeah, I would say, like, I've seen, you know, I remember there was, I can't, I think it was Sharapova versus Lee Nar about 10 years ago, and I watched that match, and the score was 6-2, 6-2, but the match took over an hour and a half. Yeah. And we were like, that was a really, really good match. It's just the score looks more one-sided than it actually was. Yeah, definitely. There's There was a women's match in Indian Wells that I remember thinking that about, but I can't for the life of me remember which one it was. 40-30, Alcaraz putting Medvedev under pressure again. Nice to see you, Jasira. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. Um, uh, Jasira is from uh, Brazil. Oh. Um, Lovely. Welcome, Jasira. International audience here on Talking Tennis. Here we go. We've got a, another game point for Medvedev trying to finish this off. Great serve up the team. Alcaraz gets a scramble to the return back. Slice from Alcaraz up the line. Forehand Medvedev cross court. Cross court to the Alcaraz. Forehand still trading cross court. I mean, Alcaraz tries to change direction, but misses the ball up the line. And Medvedev is going to, and they're going to go to that to their chair with Medvedev having the slight edge on serve 4 3. Could this be the tie break set? I think it could. Here we go. <laughs> I think it could. <laughs> it could well, yeah. Um, I, uh, I mean, it's interesting that we talk about times, like how the games evolved. Like I, I went back and looked at like match lengths for Wimbledon finals and okay. So Rod Laver, when he won 1969 Wimbledon, his last one, he won it in straight sets and the match took an hour and there were no bagels. Right. It was all very quick points short uh, back then. But you rarely see that, that's. But that's you okay. Can, like you say, that's sort of just dominance, isn't it? Whereas if you see a set, of, if you see a match that's like six two six two, but it took two hours, you know that something's gone on there. You've had some really long games. Yeah, for sure. Really, really, uh, really good match. Yeah, exactly. Like um, you know, I've been in tennis matches where I've lost six two six two, but pretty much every game went to juice. Mm. And I came off court thinking, feeling pretty good about myself, despite the scoreline. Yeah, definitely. Well, I say pretty good. That's a lie. It's <laughs> <laughs> for the that I lost. Not too bad, shall <laughs> we say. <laughs> it wasn't as much as I've been previously annoyed by losses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although I will say that I am a, although I lose more tennis matches than I win, I am a nightmare to beat. I am one of those people who will make you win on your fifth match point. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, just grit. F yeah. Finish me off, but don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to concede. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, um, nice to see you on as well, Jake. I am doing very well. Um, surprisingly alert. Oh no, the bees are back. No. There's a bee on court, kind of scrambling around. It can't fly. It must have escaped the vacuum cleaner. Maybe that's why it can't fly. <laughs> Vacuum cleaner yeah. could have done some damage. And clearly whatever Alcaraz has got is still attracting the bees to him. <laughs> I think it's the shirt. <laughs> I think it's the shirt. It's very bright. Either that or he um, he seems to lather himself in honey before. <laughs> <laughs> I could also be it. Can't rule that out. There you go. Enjoy enjoy that idea. Um, love 15 <laughs> to... Uh, but Medvedev's Alcaraz goes wide on the inside out forehand. Um, <laughs> he does keep going wide on that, but on quite a few shots though, it's mostly wide. Don't know if it's wind anymore. I'm starting to think it might not be. Yeah, he's just putting a little bit too much side spin on it. Mm. Um, oh, serves there. Uh, uh, Alcaraz has got a good surfing day. Oh, Sharapova's in the house. <gasps> she is. Very cool glasses. I like those. That, that, those are. I'm a. I'm a big. Uh, I'm a big achiever. Don't want to be recognised too much. Yeah. But the tennis camera. But the TV cameras always find you. Always. Can't escape them. 
body surf from Alcaraz and Medvedev. I don't know what he was trying to do there, but he kind of tried to run around and hit a forehand and that really didn't work. And yeah. uh, he's now shouting at his box. Or he's shouting about something. No, it looks like something's disturbed him. The umpire's saying something and Medvedev's um, complaining. Can, yeah, anyone tell us, can anyone tell us what Medvedev's complaining about? Live chat. Tell us if you've got the sound on for your Please TV. Do. Oh, it's a small child being taken out of the... Um, <laughs> Gosh. In a way, by dad, she doesn't look very happy. Oh, no. Oh, poor thing. Carlos found it all very funny, but I don't think Medvedev did. No. Uh, that's, I first got a remember of a, a memory of a point I watched once at Wimbledon. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, out wide to serve from Alcaraz, short turn by Medvedev. Alcaraz cross court on the forehand. Medvedev can't do anything about it at 40 15. Um, I remember in the 2012 Wimbledon final, um, Murray. Federer, uh, there was a point that um, Federer shanked on the forehand just as a child cried out in the crowd. Um, there was an audible shout uh, for a call for her dad, which I think as Federer had just, I, I, I remember thinking, is that because Federer's gone into dad mode because his kids were probably at talking age by then? Yeah, yeah. I think they what, do. What? There was a, a match of, I think, Azarenka's in... Dubai or Doha? D Doha, I think, where there was a child screaming outside the court and she was talking to the to the umpire saying, should we check on? Are they okay? <laughs> it's, that, it's that mode you go into. I, mean, yeah. I don't think it matters if you're a tennis player or not. There we go. We're into a uh, neutral rally, which Medvedev misses on the inside out backhand. Again, inside out backhand, a shot unique. To, well, not maybe not unique to Medvedev, but one that he plays far more than most other players yes it, it feels unique to him even if it isn't an inside out backhand normally does it well but that one wasn't quite so nice and it's for all uh ghosty to answer as, as uh, we have a man who's clearly decked out for st patrick's day in the crowd um mm. to be to be honest um with you st patrick's day is not as big a deal in the uk as it is um in the us although having said that actually i shall retract that it's not as big a deal in england Pretty sure if you go to Northern Ireland, it's a mm. big deal. Um, same for, and obviously, um, I think there are definitely Irish people um, who will celebrate for it. But uh, uh, I know on the, they were talking about St. Patrick's Day in light of Ireland being very successful in Six Nations yesterday. Huge inside out, for, forehand winner from Alcaraz. That's lovely. I think he, he's definitely feeling that he wants to maybe go for it a bit more now. He knows if he breaks here, he can serve it out. That'll be on his mind. He might just go a bit more aggressive in this game. Medvedev's going aggressive though, because he's actually served volleyed and won with a drop volley. Brilliant shot from Medvedev. That's unusual for him. Yeah, but again, I say that, but I feel like I say, oh, that's unusual for him in every match he plays, because you just never know what he's going to do. I mean, he was doing it a bit more against Sinner in the first couple of sets yeah. of the AO final. That was really nice. Oh, they're walking. Oh, he's chucking a ball to the umpire saying it's no good. Oh. Wondering where he's going then. No, I was worried. Like, was it raining? Are there bees? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> raining, bees. Carlos said it might be a random man today. I don't know what he meant by that. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. Carlos, Carlos has a stalker? <laughs> Actually, what am I talking about? Yes, he probably does. Probably does. Poor thing. Um, Medvedev sadly, still happy. Uh, probably not, but he's he's served a big serve up the tee and then follows up with a mid-court kind of swing volley. Alcaraz goes for the pass and misses. Goes over the baseline, 30-15. Well long, yeah. He kind of really went big on that passing shot. Yeah. I, I think Medvedev probably had it covered if he'd he was sort of in a good position but that's probably why he felt he had to go big first step into the net from Medvedev so uh, second serve goes uh, out wide Alcaraz is going to come in behind it he's doing a sabre and finishes off with a cross court um, volley at the net and it's 30 all yeah he's fired up for this one 
producer saying that Carlos is the third funniest player in tennis after Danil, and I'm assuming Arena. <laughs> Must be. Please enlighten us in case it's not Arena. But... Mm-hmm. Well, you might be referring to Ghosty. By the way, Breakpoint Alcaraz, focus on the tennis here, Nick. Um, <laughs> um, all right, so Alcaraz is getting ready, can sort of adjust his shirt, gets into return position. Forehand, it's served out wide for Medvedev, goes just wide. He was going for that one. Yeah, but it wasn't enough. that was nice. Say, oh my word, that's a backhand in play, uh, long from Alcaraz, really attacking the return. He was going to come in behind it, and he's striding back to the other side because he's annoyed that he missed that return. Yeah, he leapt into that backhand to try and return it, but again, it feels like put a little bit too much into it, probably didn't need to. Medvedev wasn't re- prepared for him to attack that return. Medvedev's going up the line with that forehand now, then go, and Alcaraz hits to his backhand. Alcaraz trying to go up the line with his forehand and puts it in the net. Advantage Medvedev, maybe getting himself out of trouble in this game. Looking at the unforced error count, it's saying Alcaraz has 16 and Medvedev has 10. Which sounds about right, but apparently Medvedev and ATP are quite generous. Drop shot from Medvedev. Alcaraz is coming in. Medvedev's already at the net. Going to do it for the lob. Alcaraz can't reach it. Tries to run back behind it. Gives Medvedev an overhead and hits it right back towards Alcaraz. Medvedev's going to adjust to hit the backhand cross court. Comes back into the net to visual with a forehand volley. But Alcaraz is going to go for the pass. And he gets it. And he's putting his hand to his ear. Oh. Let me hear you roar. How on earth? Did he win that? That was ridiculous. That was yeah, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. The bit where he tried to hit it. Sorry, I'm watching it again. Yeah, we've got the, we've got the replay. I'm looking at it now. And like, I think Medvedev's big mistake there was going back towards Alcaraz with the Medvedev. He kept going back towards Alcaraz. And then when he did go cross court, Alcaraz could pick him off down the line. Yeah, absolutely. And the shot where... Carlos tries to go for the overhead, realises he can't make it and just starts sprinting. Is fantastic. Alcaraz, fastest man in tennis. <laughs> They're now trading again. Medvedev going up, inside up with his backhand and Alcaraz puts his forehand into the net kind of on the stretch. That backhand being a bit trickier than he was expecting to deal with. Advantage again to Medvedev. Looked like he wasn't sure whether to slice that one or, or go for it. He sort of did a halfway house in the end. Five minutes now this game, which really isn't long enough to put the game duration up there. I'm going to say it. <laughs> okay, we now know where uh, Kira's soapbox. <laughs> That's the hill I'll die on. <laughs> <laughs> but forehand over the uh, baseline from Medvedev, this game still keeps going. Um, so what would you say is the uh, the minimum time that is worth showing the game duration? I only want to see the game duration if we're at 10 minutes. Okay. I think that's now that's now like oh wow 10 minutes <laughs> you know 5 minutes I'm like yeah that's like that's just like a normal difficult service game I don't know what about I you I would you want 5 minutes being a uh uh a, a being sort of a, a standard difficult service game I'd probably put it up at like 7 minutes okay yeah overhead to finish at the net for Medvedev advantage to the Russian player striding back trying to keep this one competitive it's definitely a close battle this one yes which probably is what think. i think we were we were probably hoping for i don't think many people were hoping unless you're a massive alcaraz fan um hoping for a, the same as as last time i think we want it to be competitive we want it to be a battle Davy giving us updates um, because he's clearly ahead of the rest of us. Ace from Medvedev to win that game. Very nice. That is that serve that gets him on the big points. And you know, we talk about Medvedev's success. I mean, that that serve is one of the big reasons for it. Absolutely, I think so. I think not only has he got such a great serve, but as I said before, I think it's when he needs it, he generally has it. You know what I mean? Um, rather than, on those big points, I think it really comes to him, that first serve, those aces. Producer saying that Alcaraz won't want a tie break. 
That's an interesting take. Please elaborate. I'm interested. Um, because I'm okay. He it of course he's gonna want to break. That's mm. obvious. That's Ob obviously it's less tense. Yeah. But um uh, but I, I don't know if he's gonna feel too kind of too annoyed if it ends up there. Given he was no, a breakdown I, as well. No, I don't I don't see him being too annoyed with the tie break. I think he would back himself. I suppose how many tie breaks? Uh, this is obviously I, I don't have this stat at all. I'm asking, but I don't know how many how tie breaks. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, please. How many tie breaks I, has he played this tournament? I feel like I haven't seen him play. I think he's played. He played a tie break in the first set of his first match. I yeah. don't think he's played any since. I'm getting it. Yeah, that's right. what I was thinking. I don't feel like I've watched him play many tie breaks. This yeah. This so yeah, he lost a tie break in his first set of the tournament to Matteo Arnaldi, um, seven five, and then yeah, he's yes. not been anywhere near a tie break okay. since, including yeah. that set he lost to Sinner. Right, Alcaraz is going to be something to stay in the set now. We're talking about him not wanting to get to a tie break. He probably wants even less to get broken in this game. He can go set down to Medvedev. Goes a, a backhand up the line. Medvedev forcing him to scramble that forehand. And then coming, Medvedev's now coming in to finish with a backhand volley. Alcaraz is going to run it down. Gives Medvedev an overhead to finish the point. Love 15. Medvedev's three points away from the set. That was a good game, good game for Medvedev. Really, yeah. like, good point. Really kind of pushing Alcaraz. Absolutely. Coming into the net as well, which we know he's not always the most comfortable, but he looked comfortable there. There you go. Medvedev getting ready, looking very relaxed. Although having said that, he always looks relaxed. Um, or at least um, body language wise anyway. Yes. Alcaraz serve out wide, comes in behind it, but it's, the serve is too good and uh, wins the point. They're so volleying today. They really are going for that. Why do you think that would be? Uh, trying to be aggressive, rush the point. I mean, um, net rushing Medvedev is, has been shown to be a good tactic Yeah. anyway. Uh, but maybe it's to try and sort of shorten the points. Maybe they've both realised that trying to get into a battle on the baseline is just too neutral a lot of the time. Yeah. Trying to mix things up. Oh, Malcolm's going for the drop shot. He really that really wasn't on because he was trying to go cross court with it, but it was too far away from him. He should have just hit through the ball. And Medvedev was on his way in anyway. But 15:30, the drop shot ends up in the net. He could have sent that out wide to Medvedev's forehand. I don't think Medvedev would necessarily have got there anyway. So the drop shot didn't feel like he needed to. Pressure on Alcaraz. 15:30. Let's see what he get where we get to here. Goes out wide and serve. Medvedev gets a racket on it, but that serve uh, was not coming back, even if he did try 30 all. No, is that 134 miles per hour? If I saw that very quick flash of the sounds about right. That's a big serve from Alcaraz. Big serve. Ghosty mentions Tommy Paul and his success coming to the net on Medi. I wonder whether you know Tommy Paul pre ankle twist whether any inspiration would come to Alcaraz from that, whether he would have looked at that him and his coaches because of the success he was having. Plus one forehand winner from Alcaraz to get that 40-30. Um, I would say possibly, but I would also say this is a pretty established tactic. That's how Hubert Hercatch has generally beaten Medvedev as well. Yeah. If you think about that comeback he had against him at Wimbledon yeah. and subsequent defeats Hercatch has inflicted, similar kind of tactic. Um, mm -hmm. First name that comes into my head, but I'm pretty sure I've seen other players do it too. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, he, her catch, she was obviously um, not in this tournament. Um, I Weirdly, Shrihiri predicted him to uh, win Indian Wells. The whole thing? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. Sorry. Um. I predicted I predicted Djokovic to win, so I'm I'm not much better. I went with Sinner, so we're all wrong. We're all wrong. We're all wrong. It doesn't matter how wrong, we're all wrong. I, I don't think um so actually I need to share this around, but there is a um a, a little competition for those that are talking tennis and popcorn. We've got like uh, do you have the TNNS app for live no. school? If you download it, there's a fantasy bracket draw. 
and we compete oh, against each other in doing draw predictions. Yeah. Um, Miles has won the women. No, Ele Eleanor, um, who's done a few pieces for Popcorn and is a friend, um, has been in the live chat for the show before, um, has won the uh, the women's. Um, because she backed Fiontek to win and I didn't in a moment of fan panic. Whoa, what? <laughs> I, I decided it was better to lose the tournament than Jinx Eager. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but you probably could have predicted it to win anyway. <laughs> yeah, I could have done. And there, yeah, I, it wasn't my finest hour. I think yeah. Miles will win um, the men's bracket if Alcaraz wins the title. Um, right. But Eleanor could also do the double if Medvedev wins, even though no one uh, predicted Medvedev to win this title <laughs> of the tournament. It was all also lots at stake. Djokovic, Alcaraz, Sinner, and one person saying her catch. Her catch. I, I I respect the the commitment for going for it. Yeah, no, don't I didn't think... realise they had a fancy bracket. Or like, me and, no, me and... I don't. It, like I I kind of am the one who kind of promotes it because I set it up years ago. Um, but I haven't shared it around in a while. So I'll, I'll share it around for Miami. No, it's brilliant. Me and my dad do uh, a bracket against each other and just oh. to have a go at each other, but we do it on a, a full spreadsheet. We do it all ourselves. <laughs> it's, yeah. that, that's what I do for the slams. I'm not so worried about winning Masters 1000s, but the slams come out, spreadsheets out, I'm working this out. Yeah. I'm very involved. We don't do very well, but we're very involved. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's pretty much how we are. Like, no one from cop Popcorn... Like, there's, like, if you look at us compared to the rest of the people who do fantasy brackets on the app, like, the whole app, we are terrible. <laughs> Good grief, it's gone from 40-15 to... It's gone from 40-15 to juice really quick. Yeah, that was really... I didn't even... Yeah, I felt like we just had a very quick conversation and it's gone to juice. Yeah, this is moving... This match is moving very fast. Backhand um, in play from, well, no, it's not in play, actually goes over the net off a great tea serve from Medvedev. The tea serve is really coming in for him today. Working well, definitely. So Medvedev's got another point. He's had two game points already. Um, so here we go. We're going to have Medvedev going out wide. Backhand in play from Alcaraz. But Medvedev's going to finish off. Now Alcaraz chased it down. Medvedev's going to have another backhand. Alcaraz is going to chase that one down. Get his backhand in play. Cross court. Medvedev with a forehand. Medvedev's going to come back to the net with a short ball from Alcaraz. He's still running it down. Medvedev's having to run back to the baseline to make sure he gets it. But it doesn't matter because Alcaraz went long. What a point. Medvedev tried to finish it off. And Alcaraz just kept running it down. What a moment of athleticism from Carlos Alcaraz. Should we be surprised? That honestly should have been over in like three shots. <laughs> I don't know how he got to that that first overhead from Medvedev at all. But he holds it anyway. 6-5. Here we go. Um, so we're on to, well, we've got a commercial break going on at the minute. I'm not going to commentate on that. Um, but uh, <laughs> we uh, have that. Yes, um, there is a, a, a bracket battle on TNS. Um, but it's actually popcorn tennis. Um, uh, that's what it is. I kind of shared it with some people who regularly contribute to, like who regularly follow us. Um, but it's kind of something that we, it's mostly for those of us who are uh, contributing. But I did put it out there on Twitter a while back for anyone who wanted to come and play with us who's sort of regular watchers or readers of popcorn. Um, it's usually, uh, usually a bit of fun. Um, so yeah, I'll share it out because I need. I obviously Jerome and the, and uh, Greg and uh, the others might want to have a go as well. I'm sure. Um, Jerome will I, put Zachary in there. Just saying. Sorry. Jerome will put Zachary at the top. I know it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, speaking, um, I mean, like, okay, so our crowd is coming up to serve at five six. Um, yeah, very quickly, I think the Miami women's draw is already out. Yes. Um, I haven't actually had a look at it. And uh, um, I haven't looked at it. All I know is, is that apparently Halep's first round back is against Paola Badosa. <laughs> and the Paola. winner, winner bet Samalenka, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. I think that's fun. Eleanor, I've literally just mentioned you. Oh, okay, you noticed that. Yeah, so yeah, you're on for the double. 
you'll win both brackets for Indian Wells if Medvedev wins this title. I'm so impressed, by the way, if, if that does happen. Either way, actually, just to win it's one. It's very rare for someone to win both at the same tournament. That is That would be incredible. Um, oh, yeah, so there's a talking tennis one. I didn't realise there was a talking tennis one um, uh, specifically. So, yeah, I might have to check that one out, see if I see how we do. Um, Emma is in Miami. Yes, she's got a wild card. Thirty love Alcaraz, by the way. Um, so it looks like we are heading to that tie break. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> just, just that good. <laughs> I'm just that good. Absolutely. Well, hang on. You, you know, we saying you saying it's going to a tie break. You, you need to get who wins the tie break right. Drop shot from um, Alcaraz. What do you love? Oh, that's a nice little drop volley from Alcaraz. Um, yeah. Who wins the tie break? Medvedev. Okay, so you're going against your pre-tournament. Um, I'm going to go Medvedev on this one, just the, the way this set has gone. And that sort of like hard slog, fighting each other, juice on a lot of service games, I think. That's the sort of tie break that Medvedev might take. And we are into uh, a tie break. Yeah, it's an unretainable set from Alcaraz. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think if I any of them are going to... Um, um, we are going to um, go to a tie break. Yeah, I, I, I think if one of them is going to make errors, it's Alcaraz is making errors, and that's usually the difference in tie breaks. In tie breaks, absolutely. I agree. As we see the new tie break um, oh. graphic, which still confuses me. I'm not a fan. Having said that, I mean, I... So um, I commentate, I remember one of the first commentaries I did was the 2022 US Open final, Alcaraz Rude. And uh, I predicted Rude to win the third set tie break based on how the set had gone up to that point. Right. And that was also the tie break where Rude completely collapsed. <laughs> yeah, completely. I remember it. <laughs> Huge so problem. You know you never Huge know. from Alcaraz is coming to the net after inside hand. Oh my word! Medvedev trying to thread the passing shot up the line just missed. He and nearly Alcaraz made that. Mini break. Nearly made that. That would have been an amazing shot if he'd made that. One hour on the clock now. Learning from John. One hour. On the I clock. definitely need to join that TNS league for uh, for for te talking tennis because I hadn't realised that was a thing. So um, mm. clearly. Um, I don't pay enough attention to what's going on. So not stepping on Popcorn's toes, but if we were, Kira would be the expert. Let's not go back to toes. I've had my time with toes. I what he means. can't be doing any more toes. Oh, gosh. I can't have that be what I'm known for, describing a toe in a colourful way. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's that's uh, yeah, maybe not. I mean, like, um, tennis. Uh, I mean, like, we call Damien the tennis brain on the jar. I don't know if you want to be the foot expert. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? No, I, I, I don't think I want that, but I suppose nice to be known for something. <laughs> <laughs> no, not feet, not feet. That was a nice I point. Not, I'm not gonna bring it up again. Um, <laughs> Got a, a drop volley winner from Alcaraz um, coming into the net, and uh, he's two love up in the tie break. And yes, I did say two love. Uh, the forehand down the line before the drop volley as well was right on the line. That was really pushing the limits from Carlos. All righty, here we go. Alcaraz is serving at this point now, but he's put the first serve into the net. Well, that was a, possibly an anti-climax. I'm not sure how to put that, but... <laughs> Into Re regardless, second set in, seven playing, Medvedev doesn't get the return over the net. It's three love. Yeah. And suddenly, things looking... Um, looking bleaker for Medvedev in this yes. tie break. Which Kira is going to be correct? Pre-match Kira or 6-5 <laughs> Kira? It's quite it's quite bad of me, isn't it, to have two predictions so that whichever that's not right of me. But 
I'll go with my most recent one. And we can... I mean, it's not insurmountable, right? It's only the one mini break. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it always looks worse, doesn't it? When you've got the, the when you lose the first mini break. And now Karras' uh, backhand returns well over the baseline, so Benvedev's got a point in the tie break. Tried to go for that really aggressive sort of leaping backhand return again. He so... definitely seems to be, seems to be over hitting a little bit. Which isn't surprising. That's generally when Carlos isn't on, that's what he does. Overhits, definitely, yeah. I can't really picture him underhitting. Uh, no, it goes for everything. Not unless he's injured. Mm, true. Forehand into the net from uh, Alcaraz on the return, and it's back on his. We're back, uh, it's, and he's serving now 3 2 in the tie break. So pressure's back on Carlos Alcaraz. I always think that's that's quite a lot of pressure when you're serving and you've got one mini break, but you know you have to hold those two serves. I think that's that's quite a lot of pressure. Especially towards the end of a tie break. Yes. Goes out wide on the first serve, misses it. So he's striding back, gets the second ball out of his pocket and begins to begin his pre-serve routine. Fortunately, Alcaraz is actually quite nice in that he actually has a fairly short pre-serve routine, unlike some other great players. <laughs> For backhand in play from Medvedev. Backhand Alcaraz. Medvedev runs around really short. Alcaraz goes for the drop shot, but it's really... No, it's more of a slice than a drop shot. Alcaraz is going to get the volley um, overhead, puts it away. And uh, job done. And um, yeah, we're, we're changing ends in the tie break. Davey's saying Medvedev is arguing with the umpire. Oh. What okay. about? Let's see if I can hear it. I don't think I just listened to a tiny bit of it. I don't think he thinks that was in. Oh, so he thinks that there's some electronic line corning glitch. It sounded like he I it sounded like uh Mohammed Layani was saying it just clipped the back edge. So I think he was arguing about that. Right. I mean, it is possible for electronic right line calling to be wrong if you misalign it, but um it's it's rare. It's unlikely. Um, I am actually very pro electronic line corning. I think it makes the match run far smoother. Absolutely. Yeah, I think in tennis, it's to me, it's a bit of a no brainer uh, because it does work well and makes things run smoother. Although I don't really understand the whole re can I see a replay of it? But that's a separate. That I think that's more of a um, kind of a peace of mind thing slash an opportunity to get your breath back. Exactly. It's, it's always used as an opportunity to get your breath back. Medvedev is going to be a bit out of breath trying to run down that forehand that he's put in the net. 5-2, Alcaraz two points away from this set. Medvedev's going to really hold his nerve here if he wants to have a chance to come back in this tie break. He needs to hold these two serves. Producers showing off their Portuguese skills. Um, I'm hoping nice. I'm assuming that's Portuguese. Um, backhand volley from Medvedev. Alcaraz is going to scoop it up. Medvedev is going to, oh my word, that was a fantastic improvised overhead from Medvedev. He then goes back behind Carlos Alcaraz from the net with the backhand, goes up the line with that backhand. Now he's letting it drop um, before hitting it. And uh, that shot from Alcaraz is wide, 5 3. Uh, yeah, that was. Um, I need to see that again. I don't even know what he did. He kind of did this. <laughs> yeah. Like, he sort of yeah. scooped it over. It I mean, looked that, very ungainly, but it worked. That's pretty much meant to have a nunch in a that, nutshell. Yeah, you could just say that after every point, couldn't you? But, uh, but certainly I love the improvisation mm. um, there. Backhand from Medvedev cross court, slice backhand from Alcaraz, backhand Medvedev cross court, backhand Alcaraz wide. Alcaraz looking down at the mark. Now, now considering his own mark now, for going, how did that, uh, how did that land in? But uh, <laughs> Medvedev sown the seed. They're both going to be worried about the line calling now. Next two points on Alcaraz's serve, and he needs two points to win this tie break. Just has to hold serve. I could change so, my prediction again now, but I won't do that. I'm not that bad, I promise. 
Yeah, I know it's too late. You're locked in, Kira. <laughs> I know. That's all right. I'll take it. So first time to the net from Alcaraz. Margins are actually very, very fine in this tie break. And it's second serve for Carlos Alcaraz. Davy, don't give me hope. Really short serve from Alcaraz. Goes inside out on the forehand. Backhand Medvedev. Alcaraz has come in. Medvedev's going to line up the inside out. Forehand, which he passes Alcaraz and they're back on serve. It's five all. That's a lovely forehand from Medvedev. I don't know whether uh, Kira's more happy about the forehand or more happy that she <laughs> might be right. <laughs> I do love being right. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think this means that I will be right necessarily. So I'm not going to get too excited. We've still got another serve to come from Alcaraz. So do I, Kira. Why do you think I didn't? Uh, why do you think I hedged my bets with Igor Svantec because I'd be happy either way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could all we could all kid ourselves. This was pre-tournament, by the way. For the final, I did back Igor to win it. But anyway. Uh, enough. This is the ATP final, and we've got a short forehand from Alcaraz. But I think there's a call. Medvedev's forehand might have been out. It was six five Alcaraz. So a set point, but on Medvedev's serve. Medvedev needs to be clutch on this serve. He has been before. Can he be again? Daniel Medvedev serves. Up the tee. Forehand and play from Alcaraz. Forehand Medvedev up the line. Backhand cross court from Alcaraz. Backhand Medvedev to the Alcaraz. Inside out. Forehand. Al backhand Medvedev. Right back at Alcaraz. He goes up the line. Forehand Medvedev cross court. Alcaraz is going to loop up his forehand. Ready for the Medvedev. Forehand goes, goes cross court back to Alcaraz. They're trading forehands cross court. Still doing that. Medvedev goes up the line with his forehand and misses it. Makes the same kind of error that Alcaraz has been making throughout the set and concedes it. Seven points to five on the tie break. Alcaraz leads this final by a set to love clutches it in the tie break yeah that was like you said exactly the same error that we've seen Carlos make so many times in this set but it was Medvedev this time that's all it takes so close in the tie break I don't why he kept on hitting it back to Alcaraz in that rally no those cross-court forehands for ages felt like it was quite obvious that Carlos was gonna increase the pace increase the was but he a bit tight maybe it's possible very possible. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, like, obviously, he got a first serve in, and then Alcaraz got the, but Alcaraz got a return on it, and uh, that's obviously going to unsettle you straight off the bat, oh, even yeah. if the return wasn't that deep. Absolutely. Got more winners and more unforced errors, Alcaraz. So that sort of feels about right with what we saw. So yeah, kind of playing a bit more high risk, but getting yeah. the job done. So. There we go. Alcaraz, a set up in this match. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we're talking about sort of the Alcaraz playing maybe a bit bigger, but there were a lot of long rallies and a lot about who was going to find a way to win it. And it was yeah. fairly even. Um, mm -hmm. Was it literally just that last point that made the difference? Or was there anything else that kind of pushed Alcaraz into that position? <sighs> Honestly, I really think it was it was the last point. Um, I don't think I, maybe the fact that he came back from the breakdown earlier, but that was a lot earlier in the set. I I, I do think that tie break was sort of on a knife edge, uh, and Carlos had what it took to to win it, but it didn't feel it felt really close. It felt like it could have gone either way. Yeah, surely you know that um, Medvedev. I mean, okay, he hasn't won a big title like a thousand level and up since Rome last year, but you know he's been on much longer droughts than that. Um, and you know he's won every big hard court title there is to win. Um, U.S. Open and five out of the six hard court Masters one thousands. If he wins this, he completes the set. Yeah. Um, but it does raise a question I was going to ask before: Is it what is it? about Medvedev that we kind of put him down in, we kind of always assume he's going to be the underdog in matchups against Djokovic, Alcaraz and Sinner. It's tough for him, isn't it? I think he's, he, you're right, because he is always the underdog against all three of those players. Um, I think in a way he probably quite likes that. I think that's that actually quite works for him mentally. Uh, I think he probably plays better when people don't expect him to win. 
um, necessarily. I think that works for it with his sort of against the crowd stuff that he that he sort of thrives on. But I think part of it is just that we're so unused to seeing somebody like Medvedev or his style, his all of his unconventional uh, everything. <laughs> and I think that always makes us sort of think, oh, but you can't beat Djokovic because look how brilliant he plays, look how well he does this. And Medvedev's so unconventional, I think it's hard to to see him beating them. But obviously he can and has. Many, many times, in fact. Exactly. Um, Jake, I um, would love to hear, see your tactical, th your thoughts on that set um, and sort of what made the difference in it, because I think your tennis takes are often absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, would love to hear your thoughts on that first set. Uh, we are thank into... I'm oh, sorry. Go on. I was just going to say thank you to Jake for the kind words on Twitter earlier. It's really appreciated. Oh, what did he say? He just said that he was hoping to see me on a talking tennis stream too soon. And I meant to say, oh, I'll be on <laughs> the vinyl tonight. But I completely forgot I was doing something else. So thank you very much, Jake. Yeah, Jake, massively appreciate how positive you are about so many of us. Like, um, mm. um, you're always so pleased to see me and Damien and Vanch and um, the guy and uh, everyone else. So, um, And we're the better for having you on as well. We've got Love 30, by the way, in a second surf for Carlos Alcaraz. So are we, it, it, we, we're in danger of a boomerang break. Backhand from Medvedev. Inside out forehand from Alcaraz. Too good. Practically paints the line. It's 15-30. He's still so, looking at those lines, Medvedev. Not happy. Still, yeah, he's... Um, yeah, he's looking at... Um, he's looking at that, really. Um yeah, he's, he's, it's one of those days where he's got something in his head and he needs to deal with it. Great serve from Alcaraz, but even better return from Medvedev. Now they're trading forehands again. Alcaraz being pushed out wide. Great angle on the forehand from Alcaraz. Medvedev gets a, meets his angles, though. They're really going for those forehands, but Medvedev trying to change direction up the line, puts it in the high part of the net. I think it pretty much came off the net post, and it's <laughs> dirty all. I don't think necessarily getting into lengthy cross-court forehand rallies is very helpful for Medvedev at the moment. I don't think he's getting a lot of joy from those cross-court forehand rallies. These cross-court forehand rallies do not spark joy in Daniel Medvedev. <laughs> um, they do not. He should get get rid. Get rid. <laughs> get rid. Start changing changing it up a bit. Um, great. So, for seven away from Al um, Alcaraz is wide. So he's going to be doing the second serve now. Winds up, goes down the tee, backhand Medvedev really at the service line. Backhand under pressure for Medvedev, cross court, backhand Alcaraz. They're trading cross court backhands at the minute. Now Alcaraz has a drop shot on the forehand that Medvedev can't quite run, can't outrun down. And it's 40 30 to Alcaraz. I think he saw Medvedev move backwards there because he just before Alcaraz played that, that drop shot, Medvedev had just taken a step backwards so he wouldn't have been able to run into it. He clearly heard me though, because he went for the cross court backhand rally there. So uh, maybe he's going for the um, going for the shot he feels a bit more stronger on. Yes, which I think is probably a better idea. I know he got fell foul to the drop shot there, but I do think the backhand might be the best better way to go at the moment than the cross court forehand. The question is whether Alcaraz will allow it because obviously he's quick exactly. enough to run around and hit forehands. And um, unreturned serve from Alcaraz holds, gets himself. Uh, digs himself out of that hole um, and is very much ahead in this match. He was love 30 there, wasn't he? So it's a decent hold. All right, so they're just uh, swapping sides. Um, yeah, really good uh, drop shot there. And uh, yeah, they're uh, showing some different graphics on uh, the screen. I mean, we talk about Medvedev. Um, maybe there. What's Carlos been doing right this match? Um, I think since, you know, we talked about those errors where he was sort of getting things wide, I think he's cleaned that up massively as the game has gone on, or the match has gone on. Um, he doesn't seem to be sort of hooking his forehands wide uh, or getting those slices right. I think as well, I felt like at the start of the match, he was really relying 
on that slice maybe a bit too much when the backhand wasn't working. And I think he's he's now gone back to his aggressive style that we like to see and that he's more adept at. And I think that's working well. That was a that was a Alcaraz special, that sort of improvised forehand up the line. He was <laughs> running right past the ball. Um and he's got himself love 15 on the Medvedev serve. That's uh interesting. Second serve. Um, which Alcaraz can't do anything because it's above shoulder height and he puts it in the net 15 all. So, um, okay, so apparently Medvedev is standing closer to the baseline on return this year compared to last year's final against Alcaraz where it was not a contest. Um, which is also what worked from the US Open, I think. He was, he did change up his return position. Yes, he is more willing to do that nowadays. When he, when he absolutely feels he has to, when he's got no other choice, he is more willing to do that, I think, than he used to be. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like other players seem to evolve to like put themselves ahead, whereas Medvedev rolls his eyes and does it because he has to. Exactly. He's like, oh, go on then. If I must. Fine, fine, I'll do it. Uh, they're trading backhands again now. Alcaraz goes for the slice. Forehand Medvedev into the net. 15-40. Breakpoint Alcaraz. Yeah, he's just riding the momentum here from winning that first set. I think he's... I, it's also been a little bit sloppy this game for Medvedev, I have to say. Mm. Um, some of the points he's played, um, that forehand wasn't great. Medvedev's gone back to his racket bag and is changing rackets. Um, presumably not happy with... Uh, the tension left in the racket he was just using. Or possibly trying to disrupt a little bit of rhythm as well. Probably, but it does. it is risking giving himself a time violation here. Yeah. Goes out wide with the first serve. Oh, okay, he's proved to himself it's a racket's problem because he's just hit an unreturnable serve. <laughs> He'll be proud of himself for that one. He'll think, oh, yeah, I knew, I knew it was the racket. Nothing to do with me. Yeah, absolutely. It's all the racket's fault. Usually I can't, is. I mean, I, I could blame my racket. Uh, but um, I'm not a tennis star who has several in the bag. I've been using the same racket since I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be the racket this whole time. I mean, I've been restringing it, but uh, <laughs> that's all it needs. Alcaraz tries to do a drop shot, puts it in the net, juice. So um, Alcaraz frustrated, trying to hide in his shirt, um, clearly <laughs> not... Uh, not happy at um, having missed that. It's fun to see somebody frustrated and smiling, I always think, though. It's oh, fun. yeah. Fun. You've got to be able to laugh at yourself. Otherwise, if you take yourself too seriously, especially a tennis player, you're just going to be miserable. Oh, Backing yeah. up the line from Medvedev from the net. Alcaraz can't run it down. Alcaraz tries to run it down, puts it in the net. And uh, advantage Medvedev. he doing sorry Medvedev say, making some very interesting faces I don't know if it's at his coach or at the crowd he usually does yeah I, I I I mean I'm not usually a fan cams guy but like Medvedev is kind of made for it <laughs> it's what he's built for yeah. slice from Alcaraz the Medvedev backhand he goes cross court to the Alcaraz backhand they're trading backhands again doing what Kira's suggesting but Medvedev's gone long trying to change direction on it and now it's back to juice should have stuck at those cross court backhands. Uh, so yeah, we've got Deuce. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right, but he had to change it. Someone had to change yeah, it. Right. No, you are right. I'm, I'm only joking. He um, he has just been a little bit sloppy this game, but he, if he can get himself out of this, it'll be a good hold. He should take some confidence from it. Backhand from the net from Medvedev. That's a passing shot winner from Alcaraz up the line with the backhand. And it's advantage to Alcaraz. It's another breakpoint opportunity. I was um, I was aware Medvedev and Runa had a little bit of a falling out ghosty, but I didn't see the finger rise thing. I mean, I usually do it when I'm playing tennis with a mate. I'm trying to wind him up. But anyway, um, <laughs> advantage Alcaraz. I'm not sure if they're mates right now, but they probably will be after this tennis match. Um, second serve from Medvedev on this break point opportunity. Let's see how it plays out. Alcaraz gets the forehand. Oh my word, that's a forehand winner from Alcaraz. Medvedev barely moved for it. My goodness. 
he, he, I don't think Medvedev have moved at all. That was brilliant. That was just straight past him down the line. I think that was also, that's also the kind of return that Alcaraz has been missing. Yes, absolutely. Especially on that backhand, that sort of jumping backhand aggressive one he's been going for and, and not making. But uh, starting to feel it now, I think. Yeah. And uh, maybe, maybe this match very much heading towards an, a second Alcaraz title. Yeah. And uh, Damien and Vanch may finally, for the first time since they started the Eager and Carlos show, have Eager and Carlos winning a tournament in the same week. That's quite exciting. That'd be really cool. It's, it's ironic because the last time they did this was, that happened, was... Um, when Iga won Stuttgart and Carlos won Barcelona last year. Mm. And then Vanch and Damien started the podcast for Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, Iga came very close in she, that one. She did. She did come close. Not quite. Um, <laughs> started it in Madrid. Uh, but I would, uh, yeah, I'm, actually, that was my favourite tennis match from last year, that Wimbledon final. That Madrid final, like even though Iga lost, mm. the kind of shifts in momentum throughout that match were just incredible, and they were yeah. both playing so well. It was just such a good watch. I think if if a tennis match is good enough, you can just about accept if your player doesn't win. I think. Yeah, I, I feel the same about Roger with the two thousand eight Wimbledon final. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a tough one to take. I think a lot of people wouldn't agree with you, but I, I respect the maturity. I admire it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he kind of, if you play one of the best matches of all time from both sides and just come up short, that's the next best thing to a win. Yeah, definitely. Um, Alcaraz is leading 30 15 in the service game. Um, Jake, Sviantek, Sakari, I watched that. Obviously, wasn't on stream. That was Damien and Vanch, but uh, that was um, pretty much, other than a couple of games. Sviantek locking in and just dominating Zachary pretty much for most of that match, apart from a couple of games midway through the first set. I'm sure for the neutral, uh, it was a little bit sort of boring in a way, but I, I thought it was just so impressive that it that it wasn't boring because the way that she was able to just completely dominate was was quite exceptional. Medvedev goes long with a forehand and it's 40-15 to Alcaraz in this service game. Um, I'm not going to spoil WTA weekly chat for tomorrow. Um, uh, yes, we have to. Uh, um, we obviously need to cover all that uh, then. Yes. Um, which I believe, uh, am I right in thinking you're on it? I am. So we okay. really could ruin it now if we just have that chat. <laughs> yeah. um, spoilers. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Great net play from Medvedev, um, trying to scramble it. Alcaraz kind of comes in for the drop shot and puts it into the net. 40-30, that was some great net play from Medvedev there. It was. And I, would, I think that Medvedev's net play in general in this match has been pretty solid overall. When he's decided to do it. It's a yeah. He's a, he's pretty good. Maybe he needs to come to the net more often. I, that, um, yeah, I think possibly that would at least be something. He'd be trying something different. It's clear that he needs to try something. I mean, I could see it working against Carlos. Is it something that would work against Sinner? I don't see it working against no. Djokovic. It wouldn't work against Djokovic. No, I, I don't necessarily think it would work as well against Sinner either. But it might work here. It was working a little bit in the AO final, but I think. Medvedev coming out in the way he did and playing completely different to how Yannick would have prepared for the match was probably had a lot to do with that. That was, yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. as Yannick adjusted, you could see how that stopped being effective. It was, it was kind of Al Yannick adjusting and going like this and Medvedev running out of gas and going like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> coordination is not my strong point, which makes me wonder why I try tennis. But anyway... <laughs> For the fun. Oh, yeah, it is fun. Love feeling the top spin off my racket. Oh, okay. I thought Alcaraz. No, that's a replay. That's why. Um, I don't that's know why. I was just thinking. I was thinking he did that earlier. No. Oh, they're showing a replay 
of um, Alcaraz's incredible get at four all advantage Medvedev in the first set. And um, that's why. But yes, um, I'm very glad that you're on WTA Weekly tomorrow with me. Um, as soon as we pretty much did the first stream, I was like, I hope John puts Kira on WTA Weekly. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to it. I was very pleased to get the message from John. Um, um, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I have no say on who comes on. I'm usually just the, the face. John is the brain. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> but you are the face of, of WTA Weekly. For sure. Which, which goes to show the budget this show is on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> A very high one. This is it. We're just being too nice to each other now. Um, yeah, no, right. it's too nice, isn't it? Yeah. But I am looking forward to tomorrow. I think it'll be good. Just going over fans in the crowd now who are having a great time. Yeah, um, Charlie's the Ron's in the crowd. That was the person to keep cutting to. Oh, yes. We still don't know whose kids they were, though, do we? No. Was it Charlie's the Ron's? I don't know. But anyway, um, I don't know if she has kids. I don't follow celebrities. I don't care. <laughs> I barely care about the personal lives of tennis players. No. Uh, we're into another backhand cross court rally at the minute, but Alcaraz is going to go for the inside out forehand. But he, it's not going to work if he keeps turning to Medvedev's backhand, which is just too solid. That forehand wasn't though. He's put it in the net. Love fifteen. There we go. So we need to Medvedev's got to be careful here because otherwise this match is going to be over for him very quickly. Yeah, he's got to find something a little bit different. He's starting to get quite frustrated, which does sometimes work for him, I suppose. Yeah, it depends, obviously. I mean, he needs some people to start booing him, maybe. Honestly, if he just has a really lengthy row with the umpire, people start booing him, then maybe we'll see the real Medvedev show up. He should bring on that. That, for me, will remain a Medvedev's iconic moment. At the um, US Open? Yeah, 2019. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So we've got um, Love 30 uh, on the Medvedev serve. Yeah, he's he's not looking particularly good. Lara 30 on the clock. Good serve from Medvedev. Unreturnable. And 15.30. Yeah, that was better. Apparently... Would you uh, say... I'm sorry. Go on, what, go on with your question. You're going to be... Um, I, was only, to I was only going to say, what have you made of Medvedev's serve in this match so far? Pretty good on the whole. Like, I don't think he's particularly vulnerable on it. I haven't seen him missing a lot of the first serves. What's he on? No. 61%? That's all right. Yeah. It's not really... It's very similar to Carlos's. It's that win on second yeah. serve that he's not doing quite so well on, I think, as we can see by the stat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah, that that's the things where he's um, vulnerable on, but... Most players would be, and that's going to come down to how good the return game of Alcaraz is. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Alcaraz trying to do the running passing shot, puts it in the net. That would have been quite spectacular. Um, looking at um, John's comment earlier, apparently your second choice after Martina Navratilova, but uh, most of us aren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, um, that's fair enough. I can just about take that one, I think. Uh, the producer's asking for ice cream recommendations. Clearly, he uh, clearly they're uh, getting hungry. Oh, don't start. I'll get hungry. Backhand Alcaraz cross court into the net and Medvedev holds 3 1. Yeah. Sort of dug that one out in the end. It's not going to be enough to hold. He's going to have to break if he wants to stay in this. How? I mean,. If Medvedev breaks, is that going to come down to a moment of genius from him when he figures out how to do a return, or is that going to come down to Alcaraz missing first serves and having a and having a loose game? I'm going to go moment of genius from Medvedev. I don't see Alcaraz slipping now. Now that he's got this this sort of momentum and stuff, I think Medvedev's going to have to raise his level to to try and break. What about you? Um, I'm more pessimistic. I think it's going to come down to a loose game from Alcaraz. Yeah. So, uh, which I usually I try to be the positive one, 
but sometimes <laughs> you just have to be realistic. Yeah. It's not that Medvedev's playing badly anyway. No, no, that we should yeah, we should make that quite clear. He's not playing badly. Just not well enough. Yeah, and that's it. Like I very rarely watch a tennis match where I go, the person who lost played badly. I think it's mm. a better perspective to say they didn't win play well enough to win on that day. Yes. Yeah, majority yeah. of the time that is the case. Yeah. Um, I get very, very annoyed with people um on Twitter who always go to the but this person wasn't good enough or they played really badly as their default mm. analysis. Yeah. And that's usually what I end up arguing about. Like when I tweet, I usually put the positive of this is how this player won the match. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I immediately get a couple of replies of, but this person's a terrorist. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, no. Uh, I have no interest in talking about the sort of that sort of side of it at all. But uh, everyone on Twitter does. You're right. So um, I'm sure that can be quite frustrating. That's why I tend to tweet about um, the fan experience, which seems to be getting me a lot of engagement at the minute. Can see why um, I think it's a fascinating topic, especially for people who who don't necessarily get that fun experience. There's a lot of people who watch tennis who don't get to go. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't go to Wimbledon until 2015. That was the first time it went. Oh, huge forehand cross court from Alcaraz. Forty love. Um. But yeah, Wimbledon was not an easy an easy trek, and obviously difficult to get tickets. But something I wanted to do in my adult life. Um, yeah. But I did go to the O2 before that when ATP Finals was there. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, I was I went in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So wow. Roddick versus Burdich the first time, and then Federer the other two years. Oh, nice. Uh, which uh, yeah, that was those were good days. Um, Four one. To Carlos after a hold there. Yeah, it pretty. It does feel cool. like the match is getting away from Medvedev. But it's not over yet. Marcus is right. Yeah, it's a pretty convincing hold uh, from Alcaraz. But yeah, it's all on It's all on Medvedev to keep the pressure on. Yeah. By the way, I can see our subscriber count has slowly ticked up over the course of this match. Um, we are still four away from 6.6k. Would love to see us reach that on this stream. We'd round off Indian Wells perfectly for us. So if you are watching and you are not subscribed, would you please consider at least um, letting us see that ticker move up? Please. <laughs> be so nice. So nice. The end of Indian Wells. We're here to bring positivity. Yes. Exclusively. <laughs> Exclusively <laughs> positivity. Exactly. Unless I'm feeling particularly um what's the word <laughs> negative <Sharp>. <laughs> um, uh, it's been i I've, i think it's been a really lovely week and a half i've seen a lot of people complaining about how indian wells has been rubbish because of all the rain i don't care <laughs> i think it's been a really great week and a half of tennis yeah and some really really good matches yeah i think so Favourite match from this tournament? Um, I'm so bad when people ask me these questions because I forget every match <laughs> ever played, actually. Um, I'm trying, it was in an early round. I, I can picture it. It's the women's side. It was an early round. I'm going to have to look at the draw to remember because I'm that bad. I, I, I think most of the big matches happened when I was asleep. So, like... <laughs> All the matches that like were noteworthy. So like Stern Sabalenka. Yeah. That was the one everyone got talking about. I Goff Sakari as well. That was got a lot yeah, of Yeah, I know. I was asleep for that. I think mine was probably possibly Navarro Sabalenka. Oh, the one we did. Yeah, that was yeah. a good match. I really enjoyed that. I just thought it was a really like fascinating match. In terms of the how it went one way and the other. Yeah, there were definitely some clear momentum shifts here. Alcaraz looking pressing to try and finish this match off, by the way, because he's hit an excellent forehand return off the second serve and it's love 30. 
Um, I'm not used to seeing Medvedev, you know, sort of going a break behind and then sort of not being able to find the level that he needs to stay in contention. So I'm quite surprised by this. Yeah, is that he scoops a forehand over the baseline and it's love 40. Alcaraz has three break points to kind of really um, establish himself and kind of make him pretty much unassailable for Medvedev. Maybe not unassailable. But pretty close to it. Yeah, that's exactly the word I was trying to look for. Thank you, Jake. Solutions. I'm used to Medvedev being able to find solutions. He's not found them. Uh, first set point say set point it's virtually a set point break point saved by Medvedev. So we've got fifteen forty. Medvedev is going to be serving up the tee. Alcaraz gives a short return drop shot from Medvedev into the net. Five one Alcaraz. He's serving for the match. Yeah, I think uh, since the first since the break in this in this set, he's just looked so sort of imperious i don't know i i don't really see him faltering serving for the match i don't know about you no i find it unlikely to be honest hmm. um i mean you never know but um i think he's he's too he's been there and done that so many times by this point yeah, yeah. And obviously of course we, it will, sorry on. i was just gonna say it will be his first title since wimbledon yes so by his standards it's it's a long title drought as it were for him to overcome which is, which is crazy given that um it's crazy given that he's 20. yeah i know, I know. <laughs> like, yeah this is a long nearly a year between titles is is a long it's unusually long wait for this 20 year old absolutely i think it's 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 mad the expectations that are on him for me he could have a year where he doesn't win a slam and i would think okay not his year then, next year will be. But I think for him, at least, he will be quite pleased to to get rid of this kind of title drought, as it were. Surf plus one drop shot for Alcaraz. 30 love, two points away. Two points away for Carlos Alcaraz. He's going to be serving, you know, well, okay, he's delaying the service motion at the minute. And um, maybe and Medvedev's now pointing to the crowd. He's getting upset by the disruption. Oh. Um, both of them are getting put off, I think. Medvedev's smiling, getting ready for this return. He's shushing people. That's what he does. Huge return from Medvedev as Alcaraz comes to the net, passes him, and 30 15. So you could have guessed that as soon as he started shushing people, you <laughs> honestly know straight away he's just going to whack it and it's probably going to work. He's still arguing with the crowd. This is where he gets better. This, <laughs> I'd be, I'm more tempted to say he could break here because he started arguing with the crowd. That would be hilarious. That would, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Set up the keeper, Alcaraz, unreturnable. Medvedev's trying to get the crowd on his side. He's kind of geeing the crowd up, even though he's matched points down. <laughs> like, come on, cheer for me. I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> oh... You can't knock him for trying. Match point down. He's trying to get the cheering. I love it. This is Medvedev at his best. And also Carl Alcaraz at his best. As he's, yeah. served, he's got a second serve to claim, a second serve to start the point to claim um, a second Indian Wells title. Serves out wide. Forehand cross court from Medvedev on the return. Alcaraz scoops that into play. Medvedev goes up the line with his backhand. Cross court forehand from Alcaraz. They're trading cross court on the forehand. That's never going to end well for Medvedev. who changes direction with his forehand. Slice from Alcaraz. To the backhand of Medvedev who goes cross court. Backhand Alcaraz. Backhand Medvedev goes back to the cross court of Alcaraz. Who goes up the line. Cross court forehand Medvedev. Alcaraz goes cross court on his forehand. And Medvedev is wild cross court forehand. And Alcaraz roars, raising his arms aloft. He is the 2024 Indian Wells champion. Congratulations to Carlos Alcaraz. A thoroughly deserved title. Clearly the best man for these last two weeks. Absolutely. By a long way as well. I mean, it's, he didn't have an easy draw. He had to beat some of the best players in the world to do it. And he's really deserved it here in Indian Wells. Thoroughly thoroughly deserves it he's still he's still shouting <laughs> still celebrating 
And now he's going up to go and hug Juan Carlos Ferrero, as he should. What a result for, for Alcaraz. Um, yeah. Is he likely to stay being the man to beat at this tournament for the next few years? I think the only person who's really... I need to have a look at his Indian Wells record, actually, because I think the only person who's beaten him is Rafa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not a bad person to lose to. Um, it's hard to see anyone uh, being as good as him in Indian Wells at the moment. It just suits him so, so perfectly, but you never know what might happen in the in the next couple of years. Uh, no, indeed. And obviously then he's off to Miami, where he won his first 1,000 title two mm. years ago. Um, only lost a sinner in a very narrow uh, defeat in the semi-finals uh, last year. That won't happen this time because they'll be on opposite sides of the draw because they'll be the top two seeds. Of course. Um, sorry? No, I just, sorry, I just said it. Of course, I forgot about that. Yeah, because Djokovic has pulled out. So, yeah. OK, now he did play Indian Wells in 2021. And I think he lost to Murray in that tournament. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, he lost to Murray. 5 7 6 3 6 2. So, yes, the only people who've beaten Carlos Alcaraz, Indian Wells, are Andy Murray and Rafael Nadal. Wow. Nice. Good <laughs> group for Andy Murray. That's a good group. So, you, you have to win at least three Grand Slams to be good enough to beat Carlos Alcaraz, Indian Wells. Okay. So, we might expect Djokovic to do it. But other than that, we might be struggling for people to, to beat him at Indian Wells. Yeah. I mean, there's probably, I mean, there'll probably be people who are capable of winning multiple yeah. slams. Yeah. Uh, Sinner definitely is. Uh, so, yeah, so I think if, yeah, but the I, I'm kind of hoping for an Alcaraz Sinner final. In Miami? Yeah, that would be the biggest. I think that would be the, a huge high-profile match for 1,000 final. I think whether rivalries got to, it would be an appropriate status. Yeah. Stats are up. Go on. Going to say stats are up for this match, but hold your question because we'll come back to it. Don't try not to forget it. Um, yeah, eleven winners and twenty three unforced errors for Medvedev. Really, the unforced error count went quite high in that second set. Um, twenty four winners and twenty six unforced errors for Alcaraz, who was much better in that second set. Um, and uh, really, yeah, looking at that um, service points from Alcaraz, he just got better. So, um, over the match, got 75 first serve points won. Medvedev only winning 45% of serve points behind his second serves. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's going to be, uh, uh, I think, yeah, that can, I mean, I don't think stats can tell you everything about a match. It gives you some indications, but um, I think what was clear was um, a lot of the times they were kind of engaged in rallies and usually it was, Alcaraz, who was able to find a way to win the rallies far more often than Medvedev coming up with something inventive. Um, yeah. Not saying Medvedev didn't, but Alcaraz was, was, did it the more often. Yes, absolutely. I think Alcaraz is getting better and better at that as well, at sort of that finding a way mentality. Uh, having watched him, you know, for a few years, I would say he's getting much, much better at making those adjustments during a match when he needs to find a way to win that isn't necessarily what he wants to do, maybe the flashy shots or the, um, the sort of entertaining the crowd. I think he's more willing to sort of put in place the tactics that need to happen for him to win a match. Yeah, for, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. I I think he's, he's, he's super inventive and maybe that's what's giving him the edge in this, in this Medvedev rivalry. Mm. Um, that being said, Medvedev did hit some really nice improvised stuff and tried something different in this match. He did. He did try. I think the second set, you know, he, he wasn't at his best at all. He was, like you said, the unforced errors really added up in the second set. It wasn't his best, but the first set was, was competitive uh, and he was trying different things. And I loved that um, improvised sort of overhead but behind him, that was fun. Um, and you always have a bit of a fun time watching Medvedev, I think, or I do anyway. Um, so it's a shame he didn't sort of compete in that second set, but overall, he shouldn't be, he should be happy with the tournament. I think Medvedev played a good tournament. He did. He did. Well, look, he got here and, you know, he scrapped his way through that draw against some players who could have, like, really given him trouble. 
and yeah. they they didn't. Um, he did really scrap his way through as well. <laughs> Tori Paul probably should have won that match, maybe, but I haven't seen it. Um, but he's, um, yeah, he's definitely, uh, it, but yeah, he's definitely uh, got his way into this final. And I thought that first set was really, really good tennis. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it, I think it's pretty standard with some of these 1,000 finals is the first set is absolutely brilliant. And then it just kind of, uh, I, like, I, I'm thinking about some of the, the women's Masters 1,000 finals that we've had in sort of recent years, maybe that Doha final where with Elena and Iga, which was just brilliant for that first set. Same with last year's Indian Wells final between Arena and Elena. Yeah. Um, although that was a bizarre first set tie break. I was commentating on that and I was just befuddled by how they were not able to finish off on their first serve. But we're not here to talk about a match from last year. <laughs> no. We've got Scott on the screen, or Scott's tweet at least, uh, talking about a testament to how good both Carlos Alcaraz and Iga Shiontek are, that they both failed to win the Australian Open, but they both feel at least a level or two above those that did. Mm. Well, that's an interesting thing to say. I'm not sure about I would agree with about Iga. Iga, yes, but not necessarily Carlos. Carlos, no. Carlos, I think, is still very close in level with Sinner. Yeah, I don't think there's the same difference, if that makes sense. But... You go, yeah. Owen, Owen, a bit more of a measured take, and uh, Damien, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I think lots of great insights from the Popcorn Talking Tennis team. I think someone in the chat was asking what Popcorn Tennis is. Popcorn Tennis is a uh, a shared tennis blog that pretty much anyone could submit pieces to. And um, yeah, you know, has some great uh, tennis pieces. I call them tennis essays. Um, it's what they are. I know you don't necessarily want to think about essays, Kira, but... <laughs> But they are. Please don't. No, it's fine. They are. Yeah. And a lot more fun to write than uh, university essays. No shade on them. Your sports. Uh, oh, no. it's fine. Everyone knows what university essays are like. Luckily, with mine, I get to do quite a lot of nice ones. Oh yeah, you can actually do stuff that you're interested in. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we've got a picture of car celebrating. We've got trophy ceremony. Um, in play um apparently the indian wells trophy is like one of the heaviest trophies in tennis yeah i saw i mean eager the first time she won it could barely pick it up even today she was sort of holding it at an angle she was struggling but, although um, she, she definitely did it she definitely did a, a better job with it this time than she did two years ago oh, way better until the streamers went off and she looked she was so scared i think she almost she dropped always it, but she gets gets bothered by the streamers <laughs> always i really think somebody should warn her beforehand but uh oh well i don't know why uh davy's saying bad luck to you kira clearly he wasn't here for your pre-match my um, pre-match one was perfect. I did say Carlos in two, but I did then say Medvedev would win the tiebreak. So I think we should go with I was wrong because I, I don't like to to pretend to be right. You're you're very you're very humble, uh, Kira. Mm, I just like to pretend to be. Uh, <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Speaking of humbleness, Daniel Medvedev is currently giving his runners-up speech. It's um, probably going to be classic um, Medvedev. Sure. Um, that's two big finals this year that Medvedev has just come up short against his competition for. I'm sure he'll be talking about that as well um, in his usual funny way. Here's, um, here's, a, here's a question. Where Where is Medvedev going to eventually win that second title? Because he's never uh, at the same place. Because he's never won more than one title at the same place. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? It's so funny to me. Um, bless him. I... His second title. I actually think he's most likely to do it in on the big stage at the US Open. <laughs> Yeah, you can't rule him out of the US Open. I I re I think if he's gonna do it, I think he's gonna go big. <laughs> I think he could he could get the US Open again. I suppose at the moment a lot of people would say, How could you you, you know, Yannick Sinner on, on the US Open? No, I think there's there's some 
there's something about um, Medvedev uh, at the US Open that's just special. I and think so. He can beat anyone other than Djokovic. And yes, he did beat Djokovic at the US Open, but Djokovic was having a really, really weird day that day. Yeah, it was a bit it was a bit strange. I think Ghosty's completely right in that he's more dangerous in a five set. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether that's mentally or his game. I think for me it's more mentally a five set match for Medi is 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 dangerous. He 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 knows how to win five set matches from whatever position. But do, do you think that um if this match had been best of five? we would have seen Medvedev win the third set? Ooh, that's a great question. It's a big if, buts and maybes, because obviously momentum changes a lot, but... I think it's I think it's possible, definitely. Even if he lost the match eventually, I could definitely see him gearing himself up to, to take a first set, to, to a third set, to make sure Carlos didn't win it in three. Mm. Oh, yeah, just... To, like, look at the way he was conducting the crowd afterwards. If we well, had yeah. a set, he would have picked himself back up. I'm just talking about through spite alone here <laughs> that he would manage to pick himself up to it to do it. I think, you know, if we think of the Australian Open against Zverev, I fully believe the only reason he won that match was just pure spite alone. There was absolutely no way he was going to allow himself to lose it. Um, and it worked. So I think in a five set format, yeah, you've got to be a bit more scared of Medvedev. Yeah, I go for it. By the way, um, producer was asking his Medvedev won Cincinnati. Yes, he did in 2019. Um, mm. I think he beat um, Djokovic in that tournament. No, he yeah, he did. He beat Djokovic in that tournament in the semis. Um, so there you go. Um, all right. Well, I think we should probably start wrapping this up. Yes. Um, so, um, uh, so I guess the last thing we should probably talk about is our champion. Carlos Alcaraz. Um, we've already kind of used a lot of superlatives with him, seen a lot on screen. Um, he's now officially kick-started his season. Um, are, um, where are we at? Uh, is, it too, is it too optimistic to, to talk about him winning the Sunshine Double? It's a possibility. I, I'm going to say no now. Um, I might change my mind, who knows? But right now, I'm going to say no. I I think we sometimes see a little bit of a, don't want to say hangover, but a sort of a bit of a hangover with Carlos when he wins tournaments. The next ones aren't always quite so, he isn't always quite so strong. It'd be great to see him overcome that this year and maybe stop it when he wins a tournament struggling in the next one. But I maybe don't see him being able to do the full three weeks of intense tennis and, and, and take the Miami title. Bold prediction, I know. What about you? Um, I I can see what you mean. I think it's possible. I think Yannick Sinner is going to have a lot to say about it. Yeah. But Alcaraz is on the board for the season in terms of uh, momentum, in terms of winning a big title, getting himself on the stage. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, at the very least, have... He, has he silenced the doubters? Oh, yeah. Well, I think the doubters were a bit, shall we say, silly in the first place. But, um, yeah, I think he I think he, he should have. And I think it's a good time for him to get his kind of momentum for the season as well when we're going into the sort of, or close to the clay season. I know we've got Miami first, but once we, once we get into the clay season, I think that's where we're really going to see Alcaraz shine this season feel like he could be on for the french oh yeah i mean the french i mean obviously it's very early to say because obviously yes, it is very early to say. But, yeah the french is interesting because um well we, we're talking about alcaraz now he's about to he's, he's about to grab the trophy but apparently he's being told that he needs to do his interview his uh speech first <laughs> before he can hold the trophy <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh it's no, I can't. okay never mind um um, but a uh, little bit awkward there, but hey, uh, at least someone can ma m uh, match the awkwardness of eager. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, Clay Alcaraz is it, it's interesting. ATP on clay is a lot more competitive compared to every other surface, yes, right now because Alcaraz maybe has an edge on certain clay courts, um, but RG is a bit different. 
Um, and Djokovic, you can't rule out. Runa no. likes it there. Uh, yeah, you've got Runa, Rude, Zverev, and Sitsipas are all all come alive on clay. Um, and although it might not necessarily be a surface we think he performs his best on, Yannick Sinner's not bad on it either. No, I think he might surprise. I've seen a lot of people saying that they don't expect Yannick Sinner to be able to translate his current success onto the clay. And I don't think, I think we might be surprised. I think he might be able to do it better than we think. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sean, you're right. Rublev is also good on clay, but he's not necessarily better on clay than any other surface. That makes any sense for his game. Mm. Um, uh, whereas I think a lot of these other players are. Um, but yeah, you're t- um, you were talking about, uh, yeah, you're talking about, I, I'm surprised given that Sinner's breakout moment was that 2020 quarterfinal at Roland Garros against Nadal. Mm. He got there for a reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. He took down Zverev on the way. Yeah. Um, back when Zverev was a, uh, a realistic contender, mm-hmm. <laughs> not anymore. Um, Alcaraz still giving his speech, by the way. I'm kind of trying to hold out until we see him. Uh, yeah, we want to see him lift the trophy. I want to see him lift the trophy. That's kind of the bit we're all kind of here for. <laughs> yeah, um, but to go back to Carlitos just quickly, I, I do think it's been a really good week and a half for him. I think he should take a lot of confidence from it. I know he's mentioned that some of the doubts and the long time not doing quite so well as he'd hoped has got to him and, and, and sort of got in his head a bit. So I'm hoping he can really, he can take some confidence from retaining his title, which is no mean feat. Uh, and take that into the rest of the season because it's it's a better ATP tour with a confident Alcaraz on it, I think. I completely agree. I completely agree. And he should, I think. This is going to buoy him. We always see Alcaraz pick himself up after a title. Yeah. Um, it usually ends up taking a lot to take him down after that, um, be it um, uh, be it something like, um, uh, you know, Sinner playing amazing in Miami, Marajan redlining in Rome or his own body letting him down in uh, Paris. Yeah, absolutely. But he's still going. I don't know how, but uh, <laughs> we will see. He didn't see even want to give the speech before he lifted the trophy and now he's been allowed to. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll really go for it with the speech. This is one of the things, if I was a pro tennis player, this is the thing I would look forward to the least. The speech? Yeah. I was like, yeah. do I have to just do this straight after winning a title? I know. And they all, I, I mean, I know, you know, Medi's quite funny and some of them can be quite funny, but really you do the, well done to the other player. Thank you to my coach. Thank you to the Here fans. We go. Thank you to the tournament. Here we go. Alcaraz is now lifting the trophy. Just about. He's struggling a little bit because that's a heavy piece of... Um, <laughs> he had to get the right grip on it, didn't he? Yeah. Not wanting to do that. And all the fireworks go off. No one's surprised by these streamers. Um, <laughs> and Alcaraz is posing for all the photos and all the images. He is the 2024 Indian Wells champion. It's been an absolute pleasure doing this with you, Kira. And with let's, you, Nick. It's been great. Let's pick this back up tomorrow where we go over everything on the WTA side. I'm looking um, forward which is going to be a lot of fun. Keep an eye out for our ATP weekly show with Damien and Mario. Um, And of course, keep an eye out for all of our content because we're not done bringing you all the tennis action because we will be bringing you not just live stream commentaries from Miami, but behind the scenes content with Anastasia, who is on the ground and will be at the press conferences and recording as much as she can. I'm so so excited for that. (laughs) <laughs> There's going to be so much content coming, believe oh, yeah. me. Um, thanks, Jane. Thanks Thank at all, you. Sean, Ghosty, um, Ghosty, uh, Jake, Eleanor. Always lovely to see you all. Um, and uh, yeah, absolute pleasure uh, working with you on this one, Kira. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a great match. All right. Well, lovely to see you all. It's been a great match to watch with you all. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, take care and keep talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.